jazz hands. No one has to do jazz hands tonight. We're well, going to preempt. We're, jazz hands is this. This is like what we do to get psyched up. We could do it. Okay, let's all do it. Jazz hands, jazz oh, hands. Bye. There you go. <laughs> Mark, Mark does. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't want to. That's why. <laughs> I knew Mark was going to try to be a tough guy. Okay, we yeah. are live. We are live. Welcome to the Big Daddy Gun Studios live. This is the Who Move My Freedom podcast. This is episode 91, and it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic tonight because epic. we have Jim <laughs> Fuller of Rifle Dynamics, this handsome young devil right here, <laughs> versus <laughs> the heavyweight champion of the world, Mark Krebs, right here. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we were thank just saying you. off air. I was going to build this as, you know, uh, Fuller versus Krebs, but you guys are friends, right? So uh, we, we have been uh, well. <laughs> yeah. Well, didn't we go to college together, Mark, and then we were in the Air Force together and all that stuff? Yeah. 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 Oh, somebody we grew, up as kids. we grew up as kids together. Oh, um, really? <laughs> Is that the rumor? <laughs> <laughs> Let me now, see. Somebody, can... somebody mistakenly put that in an article once. Oh really? That, uh, wow. Yeah, that, that, that actually it was it was me and Mark Krebs went to Lassen co studied gunsmithing at Lassen College together, and we were both in the Air Force. And it's like, I don't know how much more wrong that could be. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, I was gonna say was was, was either one of you guys in the armed services? Uh, I was not. No. Oh, what about Neither you, Mark? I. Oh, okay. There you go. Just you know, making the guns. How long have you guys been making guns? Is that for me or Mark? Uh, well, okay. Let's start with uh, let's start with Mark. Uh, well, I've been making AKs for maybe about the last fifteen twenty years, I think. Fifteen twenty. Okay. But you've been doing yeah. a lot. You've done a lot of gun stuff though before before you got into AKs. Yeah, right? we were in business in eighty five. You used to do nineteen elevens, didn't you? Did you, Mark? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. That was, uh, woo. That's tough. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you saying that it's easier to do the AKs than the 1911s? They're their own animal. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there's also a thing about competition shooting. Okay. Any competition shooting is tough. Okay, because you're like tuning it down to that particular yeah, shooter? Man. I mean, I've talked to people with bullets whizzing by them, and uh, they're not as concerned about time dates as uh, somebody in competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe that. So, uh, so Jim, how long have you been doing building guns, man? I mean, well, when, we I don't our... know when you gave up the rock and roll career, but oh, that was a long time ago. But um, I was a. Uh... We got our license in 07, so we've been a licensed uh, manufacturer for 10 years, but I, I did this for about five years before that, you know, working oh, okay. on another license, just working on guns and building stuff out of his shop. So, so about 15 years, you know, seriously on the AK. I've been running the gun since the 80s, but uh, working on it, it's only been about the last 15 years for people. You know. Okay, cool. Long enough to know what he's doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we've got the two powerhouses right here of the uh, custom AK world. And we got a bunch of other people here that are hanging out with us. Uh, first of all, you know, we got Walter Keller right there. Walter's sitting in, hanging out hey, with Walter. you guys. Do you both remember Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms? Yes, yes sir. You, you can lie, you can slide. You can have to say yeah. <laughs> I recognize your name. I didn't recognize, until I saw your face, I didn't remember you, but now I do. <laughs> it's the dimples yeah. is what it is, is that dimples. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Walter is a big fan of you guys and also an AK guy. Yeah. So there you go. You know, um, and he's always here hanging out with me, helping me to do this. So we, we've got him here. And we've got a bunch of people. I saw JMAC Customs is in the hangout. We, we've got El Tenda in the hangout. Shout out to JMAC Customs as well as El Tenda. We've got lots of folks hanging out with us tonight. Probably if I if I went down the roll call like we usually do, it would go on for a long, long time. So what I'm going to do is Lola's here. She's going to take questions, and um, we're going to go through and try to hit up everyone with questions. We're going to be doing this for about two hours until nine, you know. Um, and so let's see. We're going to probably go through this. Walter, did you have any questions you wanted to start off with? 
Oh, no, yeah, I'm just going to listen for a while. I think you know, I could I yeah. could start it off with like uh, aside from AKs, what are you, what are you guys' other favorite guns? Um, oh, that's a good question. I got I got asked that last night. What's your favorite gun? And I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> a hard question to ask. <laughs> yeah, let's ask Jim that. Okay, Jim. So other than an AK, what is your favorite gun? Probably an FAL. FAL. Well, that's okay, a good, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. I'm nice. A of that's a good yeah. one. I'm yeah. sure you probably have a few of those, right? I do. I still have like three. I built several over the years, but I've kept three of them. My three favorite ones: a little shorty, and then a, I've got a fifty-five Israeli foul, and a, a six, early sixties G one foul. So, oh wow! Okay, you know, not much, but you know I love them. Yeah, very nice, very cool. Okay, Mark. So, what's your favorite gun other than an AK? Well, <coughs> kind of all of them in a way, <laughs> um, but um, I like FNs. Um, man, I like them all. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm sorry to say that I know people think I'm, well, I am a, an opinionated prick on, <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, I appreciate them all. Uh, yeah. you know, stoner on up. Um, they oh, all have yeah. cool stuff that they taught us. Well, well, did you ever have you ever met a horrible gun? <laughs> Just a horrible gun? Like, what's the worst gun you've ever met? <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, Boy, I've, no. I've met a few. Yeah, you know, Sterling's. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different. There's a hundred different crappy guns out there. Or oh, okay, okay, not a fan of the Sterlings. Okay. You probably just broke Walter's heart a little bit. The Sterling the assault machine gun you're speaking of? Uh, no. Oh, uh, no, I didn't think so. About, yeah. I'm talking about pocket pistols. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Which is actually a very well-designed gun. It's just not, you got to make it out of something other than bubble gum to, you know, <laughs> make it last. Uh, so. Besides die cast or sink. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. You make those all in Southern California. You know, Bryco, Lorson, yeah. Sterling. They were all down in Southern California. And they, I, I don't, I, I don't know what they used for metal in those things, but man, it was sand, real. <laughs> zinc, zinc, <laughs> sand. Okay, so well, what's... kind of goes back to the Saturday Night Special thing, though, and it's like uh, if you live uh, where there's not much money and you need to buy one to protect yourself. Uh, they have some merit. They yeah. they they run for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So those are probably the precursors right now. Uh, yeah, those are probably the precursors to the Jimenez and the high points of nowadays, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would say the high points probably a step above. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> oh wow! <laughs> you ever see the high points? I've actually had one of those that lasted about a year. Or so you know, I had one of those nine millimeter carbines I played around with for a while. And I was surprised it lasted as long as it did. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you see the Brico, uh or not the Brico, um the uh, high point uh, ballistic test? <laughs> no, there was a ballistic. Who did a ballistic test? <laughs> they, <laughs> well, you're all waiting there. And then all of a sudden, you see this high point come into the frame and bounce <laughs> off of the top. Oh, oh, they threw it. it. <laughs> no, I didn't see I, that. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, that would be funny. Oh, so it's just a video. You're waiting to see a round go by. And, right, and then you the see the, the slow motion. Uh, it's the gun. gun itself, uh, yeah, spiral in. Yeah, oh. I saw that. Nice. That is really funny. Okay. I want to, we got a bunch of people hanging out with us on the chat. I want to remind everyone, please click the thumbs up guys, click the thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video on your social media to let everyone know that we're doing this. You know, um, we're pretty proud of what's going on here. We have some very cool dudes, icons of the gun world of the AK world as well, hanging out with us tonight. So please click the thumbs up buttons. And the big reason that we're doing this show, I want to say to everyone up front is uh, Mark Krebs has the Krebs custom raffle going on. Mark, you want to tell us what the custom raffle, the Krebs custom raffle is all about? Sure. Um, um, my friend uh, Kurt and Katie Rasmussen are uh, friends of ours, and uh, 
Uh, Katie has brain cancer, and she's also got lupus and uh, a few other things, uh, and they are just getting pounded. And uh, I know uh, um, this is a little bit close to Jim's heart, and I'm sorry to I, – I don't want to – No, you're right, Mark. It is. You know, I just, and, uh, I don't know what you. I'm not – sorry, go ahead. Well – uh, he's had some dealings with that in his life, and uh, um, it's a hard, hard thing. Um, yeah. And uh, I would love for these people to uh, be able to get some benefits from all this, um, and they have. Actually, we, we gave them 7000 bucks the other day. Uh, from what's been raised, and uh, uh, they needed it, and uh, I'm glad we did it. Absolutely. So just so that everyone knows, we have a link in the description to the raffle, and then I'm going to put the, um, the the link, the raffle, also in the chat so that everyone that's in the chat can go there right now. I encourage you guys to go there. Um, the tickets are 20 bucks, right, for a ticket? Yep. And I think you have a limit of 2,500 tickets. So that's the most tickets that are going to be sold. And you guys are ending the raffle December 1st. Right. Yeah. Um, do you know how many tickets are left to be sold? Um, I don't think it tells us. Yeah, I'm not sure how many. I know right now, so far, as of right now, we've raised... Uh, 9,860 bucks. So we hope to see that go up. I want to encourage everyone to go. There's some really cool prizes in here. There's a Krebs Custom KV-13 Mod 2, which comes with a Liberty A Chaotic Suppressor, if you're able to have suppressors where you live. If not, it comes with 3,000 rounds of uh, 762 by 39. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then uh, the other prize is a Krebs Custom Yugoslavian M90A rifle. So that's also very cool. I believe that is that that's an underfolder, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's blue just like the original. Oh, here we go. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. And then I think there's a MB forty seven. Yeah. Um there's a there's an MB AK forty seven receiver. There's circle ten uh, some circle ten AK accessories. Um, including a triangle stock, all kind, all nice things. We're going to talk about all that, but I'm just encouraging everyone here at the beginning. This is a good cause, a family that's de that's uh, they're definitely in need here. If you've had anyone, uh, friends or family that have gone through this, it's painful, expensive, and uh, we're trying to do as much as we can do to help out the uh, Rasmussen family. So I encourage everyone to go there and. Um, you know, like I said, it's 2,500 tickets, so you have a pretty good chance of winning this. And it's it ends on December 1st, and then sometime after that, we're going to announce the winner here. So pretty good odds from, from where I'm sitting. It's a very cool prize, this. Yeah, I don't think we've sold half the tickets, so the odds are, are actually pretty good. Um, yeah. Cool. And I'd also like to point out uh, people like Jim Fuller and others that have spent are spending their time trying to promote this. You know, I mean, uh, Jim and I are kind of direct competition in a way, and then in a way we're not, but um, he's here because he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good dude, and he's always helping people out. Yeah, so, thanks, Mark. Yeah. Very he, nice thing to say. And rifle there, but, dude. <laughs> let me chime in something here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, when, when uh, Hank called me last week and asked, I really didn't know what this was all about. I thought it was just going to be a gun talk show type of thing. I didn't know about your raffle until yesterday. I looked at the link and I read about it. And it was, as you said, it was kind of, um, uh, did kind of hit home with me because the cancer that she's dealing with right now is the same cancer that killed my sister. It's a very aggressive cancer and most people don't survive it. Um, I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, so uh, I was kind of uh, really caught off guard when I read that. And uh, I, um, you know, I'm kind of doing this on the spur of the moment. As, as you know, I don't, um, I don't own Rifle Dynamics anymore, so it's hard for me to say, hey, I'm going to give you a gun. But one thing I am going to do is I'm going to offer my time 
for a pre free build class, the first one-on-one -on -one private build class with me. Wow. Um, I would just ask for the person to pay for the parts, and uh, I'm going to do it for free because I want a piece of this too. I want to do something to help these folks myself. You know, uh, it's not it's not about showboating. It's just that I honestly did not know until yesterday what this was about, and sitting here listening to it, reading about it last night, and listening to it, I want I want to help you. You know, I mean, yeah, we can promote stuff, but you know, bottom line, those who can't give back don't belong. Amen. In my opinion, you know, uh, it, we, you know, Mark and I have been fortunate. You know, we 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 worked hard at our craft and we've become pretty successful at it. And you know, you can't you can't be truly successful if you can't give some of that back. Uh, you know, and I know that's how Mark thinks. That's one of the reasons why we've been friends all these years, and uh, most of the other people that I know as well. Uh, so I don't know how we're going to do this, but I'm going to put I'm going to offer that up for my services to raffle that off as well, Mark. So if you want to figure that into your thing, um, set it up with your deal, please do. <laughs> yeah, don't get me all mushy on you, Jim. I, uh, shit. It's okay for this stuff, man. This is uh, yeah. that stuff. You know, we can have a little bit of emotion about this. We all we all walk around here like we're badasses and we do this and that, but the reality of the thing is, is life. And life is what matters more than anything. And when we have somebody like that that's going through this kind of pain, those of us who can help should. And uh, so, good on you, Mark, and good on you, Hank. This is a really good thing, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. The magic of the internet. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, yeah. Jim. We we uh, we really do appreciate that. Yeah, it is a tough thing, and I think it's something that just like it touches you, Jim, and and it touches Mark, it touches me, it touches all of us. And, you know, obviously it's awesome to have these guys here and talk about it, but really the big thing that we want to accomplish at the end of the night here is we want it, people to get to know about what's going on. And I really, you know, encourage you guys to check out the link that we've put up there and, and, and go look and see that, um, you know, to, to read about what's going on with these guys. I'll put, I'll put the link in there again. I'll keep putting it in for um, anyone who wants it. Just ask us and we'll post it again. But uh, it's really a tough thing, and so that's the reason why we, I, I wanted to make sure I brought that up early, brought it up uh, multiple times. And, and at the same time, you can do something good and, and help someone out, and then you stand a probability of, of getting something cool. But that's like the second prize, in my opinion, just helping out people who are really suffering right now and letting them know that there's other folks out there that, that feel their pain and care about them. I think that's a cool thing. So, Yeah. Um, yeah, did you want to say something, Walter? No, I just got two more tickets. That's all. Oh, you did? Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Walter. We really that's why I had to. I had to go get a credit card. So. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, any anything you win is fifty percent mine. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting that. So we're gonna both go if, if if we win that class to go build that government oh, gym. Oh, that yeah yeah. I'll yeah, let yeah, you. Yeah, here's yeah. what I'll do. I'll let you pay for the parts. Oh, bless and your I'll, heart. And then I'll keep the gun. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Such a deal. Huh? Yeah, that's a good deal. It's a good deal. Yeah. So, you know, um, we want to do that. Let me um, let me try to uh, – uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Let me uh, try to hit up some questions. Um, okay, we've got a lot of questions about this, Jim, so I, I, I'm sure that you knew this was going to happen. There's folks out there that wants, that wants to know what's going on with uh, – Rifle dynamics since the merger and all that kind of stuff. Is there anything you could tell us right now? Um, we merged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, I actually probably spend more time there now than I ever did before, mainly because the only thing I do now is stuff I really like. I don't have to worry about administrative stuff or you know paying bills or any of that stuff anymore. Paperwork That's work and all that kind of crap. Yeah. 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 I mean, just my own personal ones, not the company, you know. But right. uh, uh, it, it's kind of nice. I spend a lot of time there now, and I really enjoy it because I get to do a lot more stuff that I didn't do before. And the merger, for one thing, or not, it's not a merger. I mean, I sold the company to my best friend. Okay. I mean, I'm mean, the guy that owns it has been a friend of mine for 20 years. Um, he's a gun guy. He's been in. The, his name's Mark. A lot of people know him. A lot of people have seen him around me. Um, he's a good dude, and uh, he's going to do good stuff with this company. Um, you know, having him take over everything brought us resources that we never would have had, really. You know, because you know, I'm I'm just not. That's not my thing. I'm not a business guy. I build stuff. You know, and I'm in my best position. I'm in the best position I've ever been right now because I've uh, I have a really nice setup that I can work from, and all I have to do is focus on building the best products I can right now. 
So I'm really happy about that. And uh, the fact that I don't own the company anymore, um, sometimes that sucks. But like right now, I'd love to say, I'm going to give you a free gun to raffle off, but I can't do that. But I can give my time to build one. So, um, yeah, but I, I envy you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so since um, all of this, I mean, I know you're still doing a lot of work. I know the last time I was there, um, I guess I could talk about, because I don't know anything. But the last time I was there, I didn't I, let you look at anything when you were there. <laughs> no, no, I was trying. I know you were. <laughs> Jim was like, "Yeah, thanks for coming." <laughs> now you gotta go. But I, I noticed I could hear lots of noises, banging, stuff being moved around, and I think you you've taken over the building that you're in. For anyone that knows, um, you guys have taken over more space at that building, right? Yeah, we have a we have we have a big we have probably about almost half of the building now that we're in, and. Uh, yeah. So, and actually, this may just be temporary. We may move to a bigger building sometime in the next year or something. I don't know. It just depends on what pops up because we're trying to find something that we can put a range in, and we can't put a range in the building we're in right now. Okay, so. cool. So, when will we hear? Because I know, you know, like you said, you're um, you're not running the day to day of the of everything, but there's going to be official announcement at some point, right? Is that going to be Shot Show in 2018? Announcement for what? For like you know what's going on with the company or guns and if there's new stuff coming out or there's new stuff coming out. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I, honestly, I you know that Mark has told me he says you cannot say a word about what we're doing. Okay. All right. Understood. Okay. Uh, there we go. His wishes. He's the man that signs the check now. You know. Right. Absolutely. Yes. We do. We definitely want to honor that. Okay. So um, let me go on to some other questions. I'm sure we're going to get lots more. Questions like this. Broke so, the ten thousand. Huh? Broke the ten thousand mark. Oh, nice, cool. Okay, good. Oh, we're, awesome. at the, we're at the ten thousand point. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, passed that's, it. Passed. Yeah, it. that's. Oh, we passed it. That's passed great. It, yeah. Even better news. Okay, cool. Um, and then you know, definitely let us folks out there let us know. You know, if you're uh, if you're if you're buying uh, raffle tickets and stuff like that, let us know because now there's a like an extra cool prize in there that it's not officially on the paperwork yet, but you could, one of the prizes in here is that you could win a uh, build class with uh, Jim Fuller. All you have to do is pay for the parts. And, and that's can, pretty cool. You get there. Yeah, you know. Well, you gotta get there too, yeah, you gotta come to Vegas. Yeah, you gotta yeah. fly out to Vegas or yeah, drive yeah, you gotta or get walk. There, yeah. yeah, hitchhike. <laughs> Ride the mule or something. <laughs> yeah, however yeah. you get out to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, mule, my local yeah. Person, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a re it's a really good deal, in my opinion. That's awesome. That's it'd be worth the trip uh, for a free class. I mean, I think you'd spend more on a free, you know, on a on a class than you would a, a airplane ticket. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. the 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 class is, has a higher value than the than the uh, round trip ticket and staying in a hotel room for uh, what is that class like two days. Yeah, our, our build class is two days and it's twenty three hundred dollars. But a private build class is usually two days and it's a lot more money. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, is this one going to be? Are you? Um. So this is going to be a private one. Private, private build class. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's even it's better. Really I can do with my time. I can do that with my time. You know, like I said, as long as they pay for the parts, it's not going to make my make the new owner mad. <laughs> right. Oh. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Knows how I am. I have to do this stuff, or I go. I go nuts. <laughs> yeah, and we will. We will come back around, and we'll talk thank about you, all. That that is very cool. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you for doing it, Mark. Like I said, I didn't know what this was yesterday until I read that thing, and I was really just. I was floored when I saw what you were doing. You're a good man. I, this sucks because I know everybody wanted to watch us get on the air and rip our throats out. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> not happening today. Well, we can't. You guys are in two we'll completely different places. Next year, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. like, let, let's say if someone bought like ten thousand dollars worth of tickets right now, <laughs> will you guys get in a ring and duke it out? <laughs> No, 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 I, I, I would, I would kiss their ass and give them fifteen. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, so, oh wow! Uh, <laughs> the ass kissing, the ass kissing from Mark Krebs is well worth it. <laughs> wow! Yeah, Jim might pay for that. Oh boy! Oh dear! Yeah, for another five, could... you can take a picture. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's extra. Okay. Yeah. Someone be careful because someone might actually do it. Yeah, somebody could do it. You never Just know. If somebody spends fifteen yeah, no. grand for, for raffle tickets. Watch out for what you wish for. Yeah. 
Yeah. Somebody out there might have 15 grand. I'm like, wait, what? If I could do that and take pictures? Yeah, I'm down with that. So let me ask you this question, Mark. Um, here's a question that we're getting from a few people. What is a must-have add-on to an AK? So we'll start with Mark, and then we'll go to Jim. Well, um, must-have add-on is, um, you know, you shoot your gun, you check it out, and you see what you're needing. Um, there, I mean, I'd say the safety is a good thing, you know, but I mean, other than that, uh, it's, it's up to your preference. You know, what are you using the gun for? Some guns are better off left stock. Some guns are better off with flashlights and some people just like to make them a freaking merry-go-round and, uh, that's okay too. You know, I mean, uh. All the bells and whistles. Uh, right. So, so you're not saying even like automatically put on an optic like a red dot or anything like that. Well, shoot it first. Yeah, uh, optics. Uh, red dot will increase your sight acquisition time. You know, anything that helps speed. And, but it depends on why you shoot. You know, why do you shoot? And what are you aiming to get out of it? And what are you aiming to use the gun for? So all of that makes a difference. Uh, you know, as far as uh, uh, what you pick, I tell people we make a lot of crap. That doesn't mean you, you need to stick it all on your gun. Uh, it means you need to put what you need on your gun. I know I'm an eloquent speaker. That's what I'm. Uh, so you're saying, like, if I come to crime, I'm advertising, uh, but. So if I come to Krebs and I'm buying this gun, I'm like, I want every part you guys make. Just slap it on there. You'll do it probably, right? You, you you'd do it if I really wanted it, but think about it. I, I would, but I would still say, yeah, I, I, you know, I, it kind of depends. I mean, you, you got busier days than others, but I mean, typically it, it's, uh, if you saddle them with too much, then they know it and they get bummed that they did it, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, educated decision on this is what you need, not, you know, who's got the most stuff on their gun. It's where you need it. Yep. You know, what what is slowing you down? What's what's not working for you? All that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Know. That makes sense. So, Jim, what do you, um, what do you say to that? I would pretty much concur with Mark. I generally tell people, particularly, you know, we get guys that call up and they already got their mind made up. They know what they want and we're going to sell them what they want. But, you know, the guy that calls up and it's not quite sure, I'll tell them the same thing. I'll say, man, you know, go with a stock gun. You know, don't, don't get a bunch of add-ons right now. Run the gun the way it is. Learn how to use the iron sights. Learn how to use the gun the way it was intended to be. And then you can really know what you need right. to add. You know, right. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of a flashlight and a red dot. But I don't have them on every AK I have because not every AK I have is for fighting. You know, I have a lot of AKs that are just bone stock with just you know with just iron sights on them because that's the way I like to run them. You know, my, my little my, my little you know race guns and stuff, my race car guns are a little different. But, um, again, you know, the, the thing is the AK industry has kind of got to a point where there's a lot of stuff on the market that um, kind of falls into three categories: junk, stuff you think you might need, and stuff you really need. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and, and that's a good assessment. Okay. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. It's kind of gotten to that point now. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that you might want to just avoid. And I'm not going to name things and stuff like that. It's not necessary. People can figure it out. Um, but and then there's stuff out there. It's like, oh, okay, I see a use for that. But a lot of times, you know, it kind of falls into that category. You never knew you needed it until I showed it to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? No, there's not. I mean, find a yeah. use for it. It's great. But like Mark said, learn how to use the gun. Learn your iron sights. If you're a real rifleman, you'll do that anyhow because iron sights are what is what's on the gun. That's what was intended the way it was to be used. And when you learn how to use a set of iron sights and you throw a red dot on there, man, your world just becomes ten times better. You know, because you've already learned your bullet drop and your holdovers and things of that nature. So now you've just you've learned all the hard stuff from the iron sights, and now you can take that red dot and apply that information you have, and you can wax, you can rack some stuff up at distance. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's just to me that's just the right way to do it. You know, I mean I'd love to sell. Like Mark said, I'll sell you anything you want on the gun, but at the same time I'll say you know you really you really want that. 
it's going to get because people, you know, we specialize in making the guns as light as we can, and then if you throw a bunch of stuff on it, you kind of defeated that purpose. Right. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. yeah. So that's just our that's just our approach from the guns there, you know. So right. pretty much, you know, the, like I said, learn the gun, and don't worry about the add-ons. They'll always be there. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, Jim froze a little bit there. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. So um, shout out to uh, Chi Town, Chi Town Tactical. They're in the building. What's, huh? El Tenda. Yeah. El, yeah. El Tenda is also in the building. Um, yeah. Is Mark still there? I think. I think we got Jim. Jim's there. He just froze for a second. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. There was someone else I wanted to shout out here. Uh, Okay, there's someone. Uh, someone says they know my sister. Okay, more power to you. <laughs> yeah, my sister's awesome. I love her. But if you know her, anyone who thinks I'm I'm uh, I'm tough to deal with, then my sister's like ten times tougher. So. Oh, she just she ten times Man. ten times bossier than you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my sister is um, out of all like uh, she's got three brothers. And uh, she's the most thugged out one. Let me just put it that way. And she's the baby. <laughs> so she's like real tough, you know, because she was like this little girl and she had these brothers that were that were a little bit crazy. So she's pretty tough. So shout out to you. OK, so let me try to hit some other questions here. Um, um, so, so people want to know, do either one of you guys build a uh, budget AKs? So, um, Mark, you want to take that one? Do you build any budget um, AKs? Considering it, uh, but um, right now, no. I mean, what's a what's a budget AK today? Because we were talking about this a little bit off air. There's always people that tell me, you know, like the uh, the OGs always tell me. I remember back in the days when an AK was seventy five bucks. No, no, no. So, and 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 then Jim was saying like, no, they weren't seventy five. Like maybe. Maybe yeah, it was wholesale. And they didn't look that good either. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, there's a lot of guns, Chinese guns, all that stuff. They're all good guns. But, I mean, uh, they're not beautiful guns. And they're not, um, there's nothing wrong with them. But they're factory Guns, you know, yeah. I mean, they're made by the military. You know, economics is the key factor to a military buying a gun. And so this is what happens, you know. Uh, they mm -hmm. pump them out for as little as possible so that more men can carry them. Right. Right. So what would be so what would be a, a price point today that would be a budget gun? We're not going to see guns for. Um, 150 to 300, like AKs. We're not going to see AKs at that price, right? Uh, th those days are gone. Well, that was uh, well, they're still important, you know. And what was that, Jim? For ten thousand dollars, you can't buy a new car for ten thousand dollars now. That's not true. In the U not in the U.S. Yeah. Anyways, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think in the 80s, in the eight, what was it? I forgot what. Yeah, I think it was 1985 when uh, you could get a Hyundai Excel because my dad had one, and that was like 10 grand, right? No, like, it was way less than 10 grand. Well, it, was 10, it was less than 10 for when a they first started selling Hyundai Excels, they were like 49.95 or something like that. Wow, like five. Okay, so yeah, so those days are over. <laughs> that, that, they had to, that was to get into the market, which they did. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we'll never see that again. So, so Jim, like today, what would be considered a budget gun? Do you think? Like, what what's the What's the um, what's the entry level price on an AK nowadays? Um, well, I don't keep up on that end of the market, but I think it's probably running around six, seven hundred dollars for some of the cheaper stuff that's on the market. And uh, you know, again, like you said earlier, with the you know the the Saturday old Saturday night special things that you know those things fill a void in the market. I mean, honestly, I was looking at some numbers from sales, gun sales. I forget what year it was, but one year recently, there was eighty thousand AKs sold in the U.S. and Probably about sixty thousand of them were budget guns, because that's the bulk of the part. That's the bulk of the buyer base. That's the market, afford it. Yeah. you know, that's that's yeah. the market. That's what they can afford. Which is yeah. why it's an I/O cater to that market, because there's a lot of customers out there that buy their stuff. And if that's all you can afford, at least you got a gun. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and if a person is only shooting maybe a hundred rounds a month, maybe they only go out two or three times a year to shoot. Those guns are probably going to serve you okay. You know. 
Um, it's the guy that's going to shoot every weekend that's going to find that gun not not compatible with his with his shooting skills or with his shooting work. Um, but you know that again, that's a guy that can afford to shoot every week is a guy that can afford a better gun than that price range. You know? Yeah. So, so like for the reason why I asked that question because I'm assuming if folks are looking for something that's a budget AK. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what price point would they be looking at? Because if your entry level is costing you 600 bucks, but you want something that's a step above that, that maybe you don't want to go to the level of 2000 or 3000 if, it, if uh, it goes that high. I'm assuming you're looking at something that's a thousand or yeah. 1200 yeah. or something in and you that, can get that a, area. I don't know. Yeah. You can get a decent gun for that price range because then you're looking at an arsenal. And yeah. even a even a Wasser can be a decent gun if you shop around and pick, and you have a few to pick to. You can probably find a pretty decent working gun out there. Yeah, you know you know what you're looking at when you buy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you know what you're looking at, you can probably find a decent one for a thousand. You know, I think Wassers are going for around eight or nine hundred bucks now. Uh, an Arsenal's around a thousand, maybe a little more, depending on the model. Um, but th you know, that's a that's a mid range price gun. But it's all they're also guns that you can work and run a lot. Yeah, you know, that, yeah they're, 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 they've cleaned up their act a little bit since the. Uh, you know, since Hillary didn't get in, <laughs> they got to work a little harder for their money. So, uh, uh, yeah, at least we got one in because, you know, many people buy those guns. So we try to make parts for those guns. And uh, the the stuff we got in was actually pretty nice, I, I thought, uh, compared to what had been coming in. Yeah. You talk about you were talking about how much things cost, like in the 80s. I think in, this is not the gun I bought in 86 or 85, but it's a, the same idea, the Type 56 um, yeah. Chinese gun. And I think in 1985, I paid like 380 something for it. That was the retail price. I wasn't a dealer then or anything. I was just a guy on the street. So Yeah, we sold them for three, 360. They had three bags that came with them and all the, the crap all... Uh, and the Type 56, if you watch the news, like anybody does, Excuse all, me, guys. 90% 90, 90 oh, okay. of the guns you see getting towed around out in the world are Type 56 type rifles, Chinese ones. And they run and they run and they run and they run and they run. You know, I uh, actually, I, I know um, a Special Forces um, kind of special gunsmith guy that had a room. Uh, uh, stocked with only with AKs, and he said uh, the Chinese one was the only one that he could not get to puke. Now, <laughs> really, that okay. may be, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different factors in there, so you don't really know. And I'm not necessarily saying a Chinese gun is better than a European gun, but uh, they all have strong points. Right. Yeah, so do you know how, um, for example, nowadays you've got a bunch of, um, there's companies that are making, like in the AR world, right, there's these companies that are making what they call bones or chassis models where it's stripped down so you don't have the stock and you don't have the pistol grip and other things maybe that would bump up the price. You ever thought about doing that, Mark, something? I don't know, uh, can you really do that with an AK? And maybe bring the price well, down a little uh, bit? That's kind of buck and excise tax and that's something that, uh the government frowns on and uh oh okay you know we don't and the the AKs are too labor and equipment intensive to you know expect your, your usual kitchen gunsmith to do you know okay a a AKs are not modular like an AR15 no where you can just you can put all you can you can swap the pieces out in minutes. An AK is a little different than that. You know, a little more involved a lot of times. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not like Legos necessarily. Right. right okay. Right. That's, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Or at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked to, as an addendum to that. Lola just gave me a note. She said, "Are the Chinese Norinkos the closest to a real Russian mm -hmm. um, AKM we can find in the USA?" As a matter of fact, where is it here? The Egyptian guns are the closest. At least back in the old days, they were. Yeah, probably. probably yeah, I, that's pretty close. Yeah, you got an Egyptian one right there, Walter. Yeah, this is, is, a, yeah, this is a band gun. It's not a free band one, but yeah, this is an Egyptian Amadi. Yeah. Yeah, a this lot of them. That, that was the first one that came in with a full European design. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And, yeah, and they're, the early Steyr guns that came in before the ban, those things look just like a just like a Russian rifle. The one, the nice, they were nice guns. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I never saw those. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Steyr, you're saying? Yeah, Steyr was the importer on those uh, back in the day. I think they were back back when I was buying a Chinese gun. The Steyr was like a thousand, twelve hundred bucks or something. It was like whoa. And that was 1980s okay. money, and that was a lot of jack back then. So, yeah, for, <laughs> I, Jim, I think you were saying before we started, right, that um, that Century is one of the bigger one of the bigger importers nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so it, what's like? Are they the biggest in the game, or is there like a big, th you know, like three importers, or what's going there's, on with? There's there's a few, you know, but Century does a big big chunk of it. You know, I really can't say what their percentage is because I don't really get into that stuff too much. Okay, um, but they do. They do most of the parts kits I know that we get into this country come through Century. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, um, one of the questions I've got here that folks want to know: What is the best aftermarket stock for the AK variant? Oh dear, here goes. Yeah, so that's going to be. <laughs> yeah, right, who, wants, who wants to put their their guns on the block for that? Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. After box, uh, I haven't found any. I mean, we use we use Arsenal stocks, or you know, we use a triangle. Excellent stock. technique, Jim. I'm sorry. <laughs> technique. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just thinking aftermarket stocks. Oh. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess the Magpul stuff isn't bad. It's just not really. I don't think it's up to the level of what Magpul makes for the M4, to be perfectly honest. I think they just kind of treat the AK as the redheaded stepchild. And it's like, okay, let's just make that. I would like to see them do something a little bit better because they are capable of it. And uh, I think they could, honestly. They're, I li actually like their new K2 grip, the grip that they got. It's actually uh, quite ergonomic for the AK. It's got a nice straight feel to it. It's really good for speed shooting. Um, and since the palm grip is gone, you know, you need something else to fill that hole. Um, but the standard Magpul grip, to me, is just a little bit too angled. Even though we use it, it's just about the best available. It's the most readily available aftermarket grip that's uh, not stock. So, but as far as butt stocks, though, we kind of stick with the standard traditional stuff. Um, Warsaw Arsenal butt stocks for the fixed stock guns or triangle side folders. Or in the case of our stock adapter, we'll use an M4 stock as well. Okay. So were you just referring to U.S. Palm? Yeah, U.S. Palm, of course, is gone. Their their grips yeah. are. That's why they're costing people are paying 150 bucks for them. I guess yeah. now or something. Yeah, they're like crazy. <laughs> so we took we took so like we t I know that I know that U.S. Palm closed down, but I thought someone else was going to be carrying this stuff. That stuff's totally gone, right? Yeah, is that what's going on? on? Actually, right. some of the right. stuff they were doing. Yeah, I, I don't think their pistol their pistol grips not available. I know people are trying to get the mold. And, I don't know what's going on with that, but I did hear some of the nylon stuff they made, like the dog line of stuff they did. Um, somebody else has picked that up, and they're producing that stuff now. Um, but as far as like their backpacks and their chest rigs and things like that, I don't think they're. I don't. Think, I don't know that anybody's making that stuff anymore. Hey, could I take a moment to introduce you to a couple of my guys here? Absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me go to the bathroom. And uh, oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you do that one, Mark. <laughs> Jim, our gun finisher and social media man. Oh. And then get your ass in here. Tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> Phil, get from Mark Krebs tonight. We have. Sit in the chair. Sit in the chair. <laughs> and, uh, can't have a nope. Live feed. Uh, hey. Hey, how you doing? Okay. okay, let's see your. Can we see your best, your best Mark Krebs impersonation, please? <laughs> Remember, Mark signs their checks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's like, I, wait I, a second. I don't want to do that. He, he's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. He won't see this. No, uh, <laughs> nobody will see it. it it's know. it'll be an inside joke. So it, it goes like this. It goes, huh? <laughs> It's an inside joke. I've seen I've seen I've seen I've seen Mark do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that's a good one. Okay, how are you guys doing there tonight? Oh, uh, we're doing all right. Good. Is the what, Not, is uh, it cold in your neck uh, of the woods? You guys uh, are just outside of Illinois, right? Yeah, it's about fifty right now. 
50. Oh my gosh, that is cold. Oh, it's not bad. Come no, on. that's that's winter. That's Arctic winter temperatures. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We're in Florida. That's not cold. Florida. Yeah. 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 yeah we're we're in Florida. Florida. I don't know what's, what's, what's I'm what's, what's, just outside of Gainesville and Walter is in uh Safety Harbor. Tampa Bay area. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's 71 outside right now here. 71. <laughs> Yeah, seventy-one. Yeah, there you go. It's it's very cold outside. I think it, it's where I am at. It's probably something like seventy-five ish, and it's pretty cold. As you see, I'm wearing like an extra shirt. <laughs> Must be nice to be uh, in the sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are we gonna do with him? Yeah, how's yeah. how's the weather in uh in Vegas? <laughs> I dropped below eighty, so I had to put on some long sleeves too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's just I'll try to make this. Seventies too. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, well, I'm sure it'll cool off before the shot show. So yeah. So while yeah, we, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna get cold by the time shot show rolls around. Um, so someone asked. This is I don't know if this has to do with anything to do with an AK, but someone wants to know what it costs to put a Sten kit together. I guess that one's for Walter, maybe. Yeah, I, I kind of answer back. It all depends, I guess, who's who's doing the yeah. making. I guess and what yeah. their time's worth. If, right. if, Three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and a lot of arguing. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, Walter's kind of like a, a Sten guy. Walter actually uh, owns StenParts.com for anyone oh, cool. uh, looking for Sten parts. Oh, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I if anyone needs recently and I bought some of your stuff to do that with. Yes, yes, you did, as a matter of fact. Yep. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, so if you need any, if you need anything, Jim, let you know. I'll I'll make sure I get you Walter's info. Yeah. Not yeah. that you know. I don't think you're gonna need anything, but. Well, I, I built six of them. I'm build no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, so I, I think one of the questions we've got here: Are there any five five six AK in the works from Krebs? Or from Rifle Dynamics, uh, Jim. You guys have a five, five, six, and <laughs> what? I know, I know what's, I know the answer that's coming. <laughs> Generally, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't deal with that too much. If somebody, people send in five, five, six guns for conversions, and we'll do them. Uh, but generally, we don't build five, five, six guns. No, it's oh. just, I own one. I think everybody should own one. If you're a real AK fan, you should own one because if we ever lose our ammo, at least you can still run an AK. You know. That's true. But uh, we don't. We do not build them, though. We work on them, but we don't build them. Oh, okay. There you go. So, what does the Krebs guys have to say? I know Mark's not back yet. Oh, can, well, can you? First of all, can you? Oh, can answer it. Okay, that's what I was. I gonna can. I can. Uh, five, we don't have any plans for any two, two, three, or five, five, six in the future or in the near future at all. And the problem is just because it's they're not difficult to work with. They were. It's just hard to fit into our production. Standards and rates right now. That's the only problem. We have a lot. Yeah, you, have a, you, you guys probably have enough problems with it. Is just getting good parts right now for the stuff you do build, and then you throw you throw a curve of the oddball caliber in there, and it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> People yeah. ask me to make. Oh, why don't you make this and why don't you make that? What? So I can sell five or six of them? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Up front and then we can talk about that first. No. 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 Um, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and then the aggravation of, of, of doing it just to sell five or six? No, no. Yep, no. Not to retool the whole shop just to build five. Doesn't right. make sense. No. That's very much a reality. There's not If there's not a big enough market, it's just not worth going after it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Spin your wheels for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's money, better, it's money and time better spent on other things that people would, right. that more people would want. You know? Right, exactly, exactly. Yep. So what about uh, 545 by 39? Um, is that that a, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I I I'm a fan of that too. I don't get to shoot that much, but like the uh, well, this is kind of a, a hybrid here. It's a it's the Polish the Tanto Tanto with a real stock on it, which makes it a hundred <laughs> a real hundred percent easier to use. But um, yeah, yeah one, once I built one and I and I and I, and I shot that caliber, I was like, holy cow, this is nice. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, the five four five. So yeah. the problem we ran in with five four five because I saw someone, Jim, when you mentioned uh, if we lose our ammo, someone that says we won't lose our ammo. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's not. I don't. I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, anything could happen here. But um, but what happened with the yeah, five four five? Five ammo. So that is true. It can happen. Yeah. Except few is made by a few American makers, 
and 545 is only made by Hornaday. So, and, that, and that's not blasting ammo. That's no, <laughs> it's not. Even though they use steel case, it's still, I think, around 50 cents a round, so it's not cheap. You know? And uh, so if for some reason the imports got cut off, um, there's a few people making brass 762. I think PMC, um, Federal, a few of the big American companies make 762, but nobody makes 545. So if the foreign stuff got cut off, yeah, that's going to be an ammo problem because I guarantee the price of the American 762 ammo will raise, will rise fast. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. that is just capitalism. And, yeah. Okay, at that point, 223 AKs might be the most affordable AK to shoot. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's gonna it's gonna shoot up really fast until a bunch of, like maybe when it gets up high enough, then other manufacturers will get into the business and then it'll come back down. But first, it's going yeah. up. Well, that's that's kind of how it should have to go, you know. Yeah. Well, you remember you remember when when five four five um, by thirty nine was really cheap. You could get you could get it really really cheap for a while. All yeah. of a sudden, the AR makers started making ARs and in, in that, yep. and it was like and the price went oh, up. Yeah. 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 And the availability went away, and yeah, as much. Yeah, pretty much nowadays. If I see five four five, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do too. I, I, I so just stick to, just slide the can underneath the shelf someplace and forget about yeah. it. You know? If anyone knows of any good Black Friday deals coming up on five four five, yeah, let me know. <laughs> well, you were asking about what would you like to see? That's a good one. Yeah, Let's see some specials on some uh, ammo like that, original stuff, not 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 yeah. Um, I don't know what stuff. our odds of getting specials yeah. or deals on that is very low. The planets aren't lined up yet, so yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, just since you're showing your, you know, here's my AK-74 gun right here. Uh, yeah. I showed this before the thing. This is I know there's not lots of uh, bullpup fans out there, but this is a Sentry Arms. I think this is a, sp uh, <laughs> a Sportster that the Sentry Arms put the kid on yeah, to make it that. into a bullpup. So I like it. It's pretty cool. I mean, there's things I have to get rid of. Like this, this is you know, this is a cheap optic, and this plastic moves around. So, someone, doing? someone here, I don't know, Krebs, <laughs> Dynamics, somebody, you know, can help me out with this. I well, hope that, that, that's a good question here. I would ask. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, guys? <laughs> Mark's coming back. <laughs> oh, oh. Mark. oh, Mark's kicking them out. That's what's going on. Get out of here. Yeah. Go ahead, Walter. You're going to ask a okay, question. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of scopes, for the side mounts on an AK, you know, side mounted scope, what, what, what's a good one? What, you know, there's three or four different brands out there, but whose is, would think better than the other, or, you know. You talking yeah, about the mounts think, themselves? Uh, yeah, the mounts themselves. Yes, yeah, the mounts themselves. Midwest Industries makes one. I really like the RSR stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we're a big fan of RS Regulate. They make nice stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, I like the RS Regulate also. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna say that. I know Midwest does make it in some other places. I have um, not seen the new Midwest. I think Midwest has a new one they just released, and I haven't seen it. I think they kind of, um, you know, shrunk theirs down a little bit. I heard, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, but the the Midwest has always been a good solid sound mount. Uh, we just kind of started using the RS Regulate because it was a lot lighter, a little sleeker. You know? Yeah, um, I think I think uh, easier to use and all that kind of stuff. If you have, uh, well, if you want to put a scope on your gun, that's probably the one to do. The thing to look at, I think, though, is like Vepers are. Uh, it's odd because they're 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 pretty accurate guns, but their uh, side mount is only held on by two rivets. Okay, and they're in line, so it allows it to 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 wobble. wobble. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, it kind of depends on the gun you put it on. Uh, okay. The Yugoslavians have got the the they've got the rivets like high low, mm -hmm. and they they triangulate the contact points. Um, okay. I think. Okay, um, so here's another question that we have. Will either of you guys remake the Vepper AK for the civilian market? So I don't know who wants it. Jim, do you want to jump in there? <laughs> uh, no, we wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, first of all, is it worth it? I, I don't know how difficult that's going to be to actually do that. So 
it would be a lot of money to tool up to do something like that. Way more money than I imagine Mark and I put together could probably afford to do. More than likely. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, people will probably see some better AKs come out, though. They just, if you're looking for, particularly for Vepra stuff, it's not necessarily going to happen, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just how it goes sometimes. I mean, are we, is there, what's the chances of getting that opened up again? Because I know right now there's some kind of like trade embargo or something going on. Well, that was, there was part of that, part of that, um, this, uh, what is the last suppressor thing that went up and they kind of pushed the it to share, the side? The share, the share act. act. Mm -hmm. two, there were two things attached to the share act. One was about, they basically said if a gun is legal here now, you can't block its importation. So that would okay. have opened up all those bans. That got shoveled aside. And then okay. there was another thing attached to that about 12 gauge shotguns not making them in the DDs. So, you know, <laughs> it's not like that could happen and you could overturn all these the Bush ban and this ban and that ban. Then you'd have a free flow of things again and it would be um it'd be a, it'd be a, it'd be a free for all <laughs> for a while. But uh I don't know if that's gonna happen if that's that's a that's a pretty you know, taking away all those bands to get the libs all fired up again. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't need a mind all. reader to tell you. Yeah. Well, with, you know, with the Russian stuff that's going on in politics right now, I just it'd be an awful hard thing to sell to try to end Russian sanctions. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Anything that's owned by Kalishnikov concern, we can't do do business with. And does you know Kalishnikov concern acquired Vepper. Right. And they were, Pepper was in bankruptcy, and I guess Kalishnikov and CERN bought them, and as soon as that happened, they got put on the ban list. Yeah. So, uh, Molot, yeah, Molot got picked up, and yeah. Is so, it going to help that they're going, because I think they're going private, right? Yeah, but it's still coming from... Oh, okay. You know, well, they've been private. They would kind of have to do what Glock did back in the 90s. You know, Glock and, and uh, HK, they opened American places. No. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought AK. I mean, uh, Kalishnikov USA was in the process of doing that. I don't know what pro where they're at in that whole thing, but I don't either. Um, I've heard things, but I really don't know. Um, yeah. There's a. I mean, there is a. I mean, technically, because they're an American company, I don't think, based on the laws, they can do business with Kalishnikov Concern because yeah. they are an American company. So I, I, I don't know how that works, and it's kind of beyond my knowledge. I imagine there's. There's, you know, import lawyers and stuff that can figure that kind of stuff out, but it's beyond me. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and here's another question. Have either of you guys written any books on the AK or even considered writing books? So, Jim, is there is there a book, you know? you got a little bit of time one. now. I've been asked to do it, and uh, I'm considering it. But I have not. You know, I put out an Armors DVD a few years ago. That counts. But uh, I have not done a book, no. Okay. And what about you, Mark? Um, get, you know. I don't. Um, honestly, I don't see where I could put out a book and uh, enlighten anybody. I mean, uh, most of our, our things are about modernizing you know the the ak and uh all that and i i you know i mean uh the guys that invented it are the ones that can tell you about it and yeah. they will tell you about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so that here's another make them bad but uh you know <laughs> it just makes them uh yeah, i was are. i was got a kick out of the russians when you know, the wall came down and all of a sudden they became capitalists. They got all agitated because they'd given away the farm to every podunk country in the world. And now they're mm -hmm. pissed that everybody's making AKs. And it's like, well, that's ours. It's like, well, you communism, should. baby. <laughs> hey, you know, you're on the wrong side. I think, I think you're on the wrong side, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, it belongs to the people. So, or, you know, um, yeah. Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Eugene Stoner's flying around in a private jet and Kalishnikov's riding a mule. You know, it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. or, or, or he's riding in a Lada, okay? A Lada, all right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, was doing good. he was doing good before he died. He was wrecked. Yeah, no, I know. But that was, yeah. after, that was after the wall came down, though, too. So. Yeah. 
yeah. was I he's an idol, you know. I mean, you know, he all you gotta do is show up in a room and people pay to see him, you know. Yeah. That's, I think I've seen I've seen a picture of a very young Mark Krebs with Kalishnikov. I think so. Or is that was like that photoshopped, Mark? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of people seem to think it was. Um, oh. whatever. Wait, was it photoshopped or not? No, no it was real. Oh, no. that was real. Okay. Oh. Well, I had Otherwise, to I wouldn't have had a scowl on my face when when they took the picture. Uh, I don't know what the hell I was thinking about when that picture was taken, but I kind of was like grimacing over something, you know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he had to use the bathroom or something. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Well, happens. They, they were translating while all that was going on, so I was probably trying to pay attention. You know. Oh, okay. And so I, that I, from... I always look confused when I'm trying to pay attention. So. Oh. <laughs> was that from your like um, Air Force espionage days? <laughs> Black ops. No, you know, I, I will tell you though, I woke up right before we landed in Moscow, and buddy, all that shit, the Cuban Missile Crisis, all that stuff hit me right in the face, and I said, oh my God, where am I going? And then, uh, <laughs> then I woke up a little bit more, and everything was okay. But uh, yeah, I, uh, it, it did, and you know, uh, your whole lifetime of being afraid of that shit, and then all of a sudden, wow, you know, I'm here. That that was freaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was a cool. That, so that was a cool meeting, ultimately for you, right? Oh yeah, I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. um, I, you know, I mean, I was there at the right time under the right circumstances, and uh, it was, I was lucky to be there. And I got to meet who I got to meet, you know, it was cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Did you ever meet Kalishnikov, Jim? No, unfortunately I did not. I met his daughter and his son, but that's it. I did not meet him. Okay. I got to stand in his presence really close by. If that okay. means anything. Uh, and go to Knight's Armament and see and, and get in the private room there when he was there. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, that yeah, was kind of cool. Just getting into the private room at night's armament is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. So congratulations to you on that one. Yeah, I got to stand in this, you know, like a group of people, like, you know, here. It's like, oh, there he is. It's like, I didn't know what the hell to say, you know. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. R rubbing yeah. elbows. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So um, Joe Carpenter says, if I rub my laptop all over my body, can I get some knowledge from Jim and Mark? Um, don't do weird stuff like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't They'll never come do back. That. They'll never come back on if you do that kind of weird stuff. <laughs> I don't think they want to necessarily. Yeah, we know can that. teach you how to drink some beer and stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you know what? Let's take a little bit of time here. Let's go back. I'm, uh, there's uh, there's obviously a ton of questions. I just want to go back to the whole purpose of this hangout tonight is to tell you guys about the Krebs custom raffle. So I just want to go back to that. I want to encourage you guys to uh, participate in this raffle. It's a very good deal. Lots of cool prizes involved here. Um, uh, Jim Fuller just an announced another prize, but there's uh, some cool prizes involved. So should we go through this, Mark, and, and uh, talk about the prizes here? Absolutely, yeah, uh, especially Jim stuff because that's new and um, um, unsolicited, I might add, uh, and out of the yeah. kind of his heart. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, – so let's uh, discuss that. So from so this new added prize that's coming from Jim, let's talk about that first for anyone who's just joining us now. And I want to encourage everyone who is watching, please click the thumbs up button. We need those thumbs ups, okay? So click the thumbs ups. Let's keep everything going here. And of course, share this hangout with your friends and family on social media. So, um, so what exactly are you offering here, Jim, just for the folks who've just come in? Um, a private bill class. Um, whoever wins the raffle, they can call. And arrange for a date. You know, we do it on a two day. It's a two day process to do it. It'll just be a private one on one bill with me. Um, they will have to pay for the cost of the parts. Um, I can't give that away because it's not my company anymore. But I can give my time for that, and I want to because I, I really like what Mark's doing here, and I want to help too. So, 
Yeah, yeah, I would think that should be a separate prize, actually, um, th and that would add to the uh, the allure of the raffle that that Jim yeah. is doing. That um, yeah. So one. So it's so uh, so separately from the other prizes going on, we'll add that into something that someone could win, right? Yeah, I would think. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think that should be a separate prize. Okay. Yeah. Offering up more possibilities for people to win something. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And uh, more things for people to buy tickets for. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Bottom line, that's the main thing. We're trying to raise money to help this lady. So. Yes. And you buy know, tickets and, and the family. Buy Absolutely. The more tickets you buy, the better your chances are. Buy a bunch of them. Absolutely. I think Lola. We need to. We need to get some more tickets. Um, and and by the way, there is a deal, right, Mark? That deal's still going on. That if you um, if you give a hundred bucks instead of five tickets, you get six. Is that still going that on? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. If you spend the hundred bucks, you get an extra ticket. You know, it goes to a good cause, and it ups ups the probability of you winning one of the cool prizes. Mark, let's go down through um, some of the prizes that are in here. So the first one is the Krebs uh, KV thirteen mod two. Right, so, and we, we have the limiter e suppressor that would go with it. Yeah, so that um, would look something like this. Would look <laughs> a, a lot like that. Yeah, actually. pretty much exactly <laughs> like um, this. <laughs> yeah, it would look similar to that. And uh, yeah, which is this is a beautiful guy. <laughs> and and a very nice uh, suppressor on, on on front there. Then we have a um, gun that we built a long time ago. The uh, the um, uh, what is it? The Yugoslavian. Uh, I think that's an AR. Ninety A, ninety A, right? It's a ninety A, and it's uh, it's all blued and made as close to factory as possible. Kind of uh, looks like and a customer gave this one for the raffle. Oh, um, nice. Okay, which is. Uh, a beautiful thing he's uh and he's a great guy uh, so you you guys used to make that but you don't currently make that anymore right we, we used to make everything once yeah <laughs> so oh, well, that mean, makes it even more that makes it even like more special to. right in a way i guess yeah 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 so very cool yeah, and the then go ahead no the 95a which i happen to have one here actually they are super well-made guns i mean i don't for this Yugoslavian stuff is like, my opinion is like, top notch stuff. So yeah, the the, yeah. the contour of the barrel, you'll notice it's a oh, little yeah. bit thinner before the gas block, and then it gets thicker, and that was yeah. all about harmonics. Okay. Yeah. The um. Whether the, it shoots better or not, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it looks nice. You know. It lightens it up a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And so here you go. So now let's go on to the other prizes, Mark. Um, there's an MB-47 receiver. Yes, uh, made by the Sharps Brothers. Uh, they make awesome, awesome receivers. And uh, um, they, uh, once again, honestly, we started out with this raffle with the suppressor. Well, no, we started out with the rifle only. Mm -hmm. And then Liberty said, well, hey, let me kick in. Yeah. And then we talked to uh, um, J-Mac and asked them to share stuff. And they said, well, let us toss in. And then I asked Circle 10 to do it. And they said, well, hey, let me toss stuff in. And then... Jim's on the program now, and he said, hey, let me toss stuff in. So, I mean, all of this start? snowballed from <laughs> one rifle. Um, and uh, it's way cool to see people uh, do do good things. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm impressed uh, with humanity at this moment. Awesome, Which, yeah. It's hard to hard to muster up sometimes. 
<laughs> no, it's good to see. And, you know, people might not think that as gun guys we're like this, but we're absolutely like this. Let me just read a message. One of the people watching us right now is Kurt Rasmussen, um, whose family, you know, this, this uh, the Krebs Custom Raffle is uh, in support of. He says, thank you, Mark, Jim, Hank, everyone. Katie and I are so, so grateful. Love the show. So um, that's nice. Yeah. You know, thanks for watching us, guys. We're, guys, we're I, I, you know, uh, on my part, we're happy to do this. We, you know, we like to know that we're doing something and, and we're giving back to folks instead of taking, you know, lots of people out there always helping us. We like to know that we're giving back and helping people. So, yeah, um, you know, excuse, excuse me for buttoning in, but I, I will say I, I, I said everybody else, but you jumped on help the guy that does our computer graphics chipped in for the you know i mean everybody around us has been way cool about this and uh and the people it's going to you you got to see the man work and katie work and and they're boss they're freaking good people really good people yeah that's that's great to know man i mean i know you and you're a good guy and uh, to go to this level and I'm put an this asshole. much in it, no, you're uh, a good guy, but, man. You're but, a good guy. But they're really good people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coming from Mark, that's a huge compliment because Mark is a good guy. He's a very nice guy. Always been that's great awesome. with me as long as I've been doing this. You know, I'm not like, you know, a big uh, a big name or whatever in this thing, but Mark's always helped me out. And same thing with Jim, you know, Jim's always been, um, you know, awesome with me so far as I'm concerned. So great dudes. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised that you guys are out here giving back to people because that's what I've seen you doing all the time. So, um, you know, and, and I'm really happy that, that these folks are, you know, that we're helping them somehow we're shining some kind of light into their lives because I know this is the kind of thing I mean I don't think any of this is going to make everything better because I know ultimately it's a really tough thing to deal with but it's it's great to see that um, people are participating and they appreciate it and all of that you so. know one thing I will say that Kurt said to me was that he was he was I mean he needs the money but he was also totally taken back by uh, people caring about him yeah. and he said that felt so good yeah uh, right absolutely that's a good thing and I know he had to the the um, the guns that he had in his collection he obviously had to sell right when all this started happening he saw that guy is a gun whore and <laughs> he sold a glill that I made for him that he's kept for probably 15 years and he would rotate out on guns about every 20 minutes and that one he just kept on to and yeah he sold everything he owns I mean uh, it's uh, yeah that's okay. it Awesome. All right. So you know what? Uh, Warsaw Patriot wants to remind me to shout out Zeke. Zeke from um, Zeke Shoots Channels here. So shout out to Zeke. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, and I, and I want to remind everyone, please click the thumbs up and share this. And then for the folks who are going to watch this later on and even hear it when we put it up on iTunes, uh, you know, there is a link in the description or you can just search Google for Krebs Custom. Uh, raffle and you will uh, find out what we're talking about here. Please participate and help out. Uh, we appreciate it and you you also stand a pretty good chance of winning some cool stuff by participating in the uh, in the raffle. So um, I think Lola wants us to finish the we were talking about the prizes. Mark, so Lola wants us to finish that up. I think that you we uh, we have some stuff from Circle 10 AK, right? Some accessories. Yes. Uh, he uh, donated a butt stock a pistol grip, uh, all aluminum. Um, one is a, a triangular fake, kind of, but it, it's well made. And uh, he's got an aluminum grip, and uh, he's also got the uh, 
Xena style titanium or titanium muzzle brake. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a is there a charging handle in there or I believe so. Oh, yeah, boy. I think there's a charge charging yeah, handle in there so. as well. Yeah, absolutely. I will embarrass them into giving it up. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I see it. It's on there. It's on there. But anyway, though. He's yeah. A guy. Absolutely. Okay, so let's you know what? Let's um let's go back to taking some questions here. Um Hank, I'm jumping in. I finally made it. Oh, had to work. Had to work late, so I'm here. Oh, okay, cool. All right, <laughs> we see you. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> okay, so um, so some people want to know what are the differences between the the guns that you two guys make. So what's the differences between a rifle dynamics and a Krebs in terms of options and things like that? Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever even thought about this. You should look at the websites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Actually, to be honest, we both use a lot of each other's bars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Um, uh, it's uh, You should make up your own mind and look at each website and think what you want. Because we are not going to get into point. mud wrestling here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not. No, I don't. I think I think both of these guys make really nice rifles. Um, I think it just you know get both. That's what I say. That's what guys, I say. Get both. Yeah. If you're asking yourself that question, just get just get a rifle dynamics and get a Krebs, and there you go. And then you know, in your safe or when you go shooting, you'll be able to brag to everyone that you have. Uh, you know, <laughs> you have two of the best. So, <laughs> yeah. I plan on buying one of his one of these days. I don't, you know, there's that's going to happen one of these days. It's just uh, getting around to it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you're in semi-retirement. <laughs> well, I'm going to call up Mark and ask for a special deal when I do. <laughs> well, you know, I'd give you one. Um, I know you would, brother, just like I would for you. You know that. <laughs> uh, you know what? When you call him up, just ask for the Hank Strange discount. <laughs> What's that? What's that? <laughs> that twice as much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'll tag on. He'll tag money onto it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, um, okay, someone wants to know what happened to the Rifle Dynamics DMR. It just didn't sell well, honestly. Okay. Um, we, we built a batch, I think, of uh, 25 of them. We sold 18, and I'm not going to mm -hmm. go down that hole anymore. <laughs> so simple as that. The, the thing is, we found... Buy AKs for accuracy. They buy AKs to be AKs. And we built a gun that would hold them all the way out to 500 yards. Proved it, and 18 people bought it, and that's all. We haven't had any requests for it since then. So, yeah, just kind of how it goes. You know, sometimes you hit a home run, sometimes you don't, and that one just wasn't. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's a good. Uh, that's. A good I, I think right also there. people don't believe it. Yeah, there's a lot of that too. I mean. I mean, you know, I, I had uh, I had Travis Haley test fire the gun to get as much credibility out as I can because I don't think anybody would believe he would cheat something like that, and he didn't. Bottom line, people just aren't interested in an accurized AK. I mean, I just don't see the market for it. I thought maybe it would be, you know, or else I wouldn't have never went down that road. Um, but there just really was not that much interest in it. Okay. All right. Good enough there. Um, I see some folks asking for uh, gun porn, so they want to see some guns. I don't know. Did you bring any guns, Jim? Um, I got some in the other room. I'm actually at home right now, but I got some stuff in the other room I can break out here. I do yeah. have one little special prototype uh -oh. part that I'm going to show you. Yeah. Pro prototype. Yeah, prototype. Prototype. prototype uh, porn. I like the idea of this. Let's see. Now I'm going to actually show it to you. Never seen sure before. To show you. Okay, now don't get fired on our behalf. You know. Nah, they won't fire me for this. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've been thinking about this for a long time. We thought the market needed something like this. It's you know it's long overdue, and and so we we designed our own safety. Um, and it's called. Let me get it here up here to the camera here. It's called the it's called the the Reb safety. And you see, this is just a prototype, so it's pretty <laughs> shitty looking. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, I'm is trying to make this work on the camera. I can't see it in the thing here. Is that yeah, well, you're, you're, yeah, you're a little dark there. We got to shine some light on it. Is yeah. that available at Home Depot? <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually half inch. That's how you start. <laughs> I, got, I was an electrician for many years. We, we were like that. See how that works? You like that idea, Mark? You think that would, you think that would sell? Well, what, what are you I, looking uh, at? <laughs> I can't comment on that, Jim. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the guys in the shop made this up just for a joke today. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'll say this. We <laughs> thought it would be funny. Yeah. You know, oh, yes. Piece strap welded on a safety. <laughs> it, it'll work. It, it, it does work. Hey, yeah, I'd like to see you using one of those. <laughs> hey, baby face, that could be for I the post apocalyptic. The I would use the real crib safety before I would use that. That was just a joke. <laughs> you need to make something crazy like that for the, the post apocalyptic AK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Double AK. Yeah, this is my friend, Babyface P. That's what we call him. Obviously, you see the baby face there. And he's a big fan of you guys, so he's jumping in to help us to moderate everything going on. But he does like to build up AKs, so. Oh, and he's, and he's gonna take he's gonna take the time. Here's an AK he built. Go no, go ahead, show it. You'll never you'll no. never have Mark Krebs. Yeah, crank it's a, again it's to show off your gun too. Hey, nice gun. Yeah, yeah. it shoots oh, and it works. It's all that matters. Is that a Tula or a Bulgarian? That's a Tula. I oh. wanted Russian. I spent the money on a Russian. Nice. It was expensive. It was stupidly expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. There's lots but of hey, things in what you just said. Cool. Spending the money on the Russian. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of like a bride, but I know you're willing. <laughs> yeah. So, but congratulations on that, man. That's pretty cool. Not, you know, we were, we were saying before, it's not easy to go out there and build an AK, but people do it, right? Yes, they do. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's not hard though. It's just uh, to me, it was all tools. the The hardest thing was was spending the thousand dollars on all the tools that I wanted. Uh, building it itself was fun. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing I think, right, Jim? Like, um, like th I know there's people who, w when they look at the price of what these custom AKs go for, they're like, "Wow, you know, oh yeah, this no, is there's a lot a, of money." There's a big difference from what I can throw together in my garage versus what you'd get out of one of the the two companies. Huge yeah. difference. I mean, we we shot the one with the suppressor on it at Hank's place, and Hank can attest to my face of how I was like, "Man, this is cool." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared yeah. to my like knock together AKs that I make. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth it. You get what you pay for. I think oh, yeah. I think you, you got the people out there getting a deal. So, okay, um, let's see. Let's go to some other questions. I, uh, Jim, some folks are asking us if you got any flack after the Vegas shooting. What do you have to say about that? Um, what? Not much. I wish I knew why, what, how, and when, just like everybody else. You know, yes. um, I, I actually, you know, know quite a few people at Metro and some pretty high up people there. And I can't even get an answer out of them. Nobody really knows. And I think weird. the worst part of the deal is not knowing why or how we're all the crap. Yeah, on. it's there's weird. Some, it, it feels like there's a cover up or something going yeah, on. There's because, something up with the whole situation. It's not the norm by any means. So, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theory kind of guy, but I honestly got to say, after all this time and nothing coming out that has, there, there, there's something that ain't right about this. Yeah, I, I'm not either. I'm not one of those ones that, you know, you know, but. It's just strange. No, no, tin foil. no tin foil, you know. No, no, me neither. No, but no. It does seem awful quiet. Yeah. <laughs> now, part yeah. of it, part of it, when when uh, Walter and I were recently in Vegas, part of the Vegas culture, right? Just because there's so much tourism that comes to Vegas, so much money. Yeah, a lot of money. money. A lot of things get tamped down, but this is weird. This is something the entire world is interested in, and Vegas is a place that has a lot of cameras and a lot of information that they're gathering on. A, any given person at any given time that it's weird that we're not seeing any of it coming out. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe they don't have more video footage in a casino. I mean, you know, I was an electrician. I worked on these casinos. You almost can't go anywhere in a casino without being on camera. I mean, maybe the bathroom, you know, and, and, and even some of the, the waiting rooms or the bathrooms are on camera, not the toilet areas, but um, it's right. pretty hard to not be seen in a casino. So I, I don't get this stuff. I mean, the Mandalay Bay is an older casino, so maybe they don't have the surveillance like some of the newer ones do. But they got to have something in there. It's just oh, I, I'm I, sure they do. But they're, the litigious thing is preventing any of them being released. I mean, they yeah. don't want to. They don't want to expose themselves to even more. Right. Well, they don't want to blow their case. And right. but it, it is unusually quiet. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they wouldn't want to blow up the case because the guy is not getting convicted of anything. He's not alive. No, anymore. the 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 legal part, the being oh, sued the by. Stuff. Uh, by hundreds yeah, of people. Mandalay Bay is probably pretty worried about lawsuits right now. 
that. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's okay, true. yeah, there's, and there's they are the victim. Yeah, well, the only I mean, th there's excuse me, there are one of the victims. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. I'm sure they didn't plan this. No. The weird part about it, I find, and I'm still very curious as a security guy, I, I, I. I, I got weird feelings about that security dude. You know, he didn't, just, he didn't he recently disappear? He's now like out of the no. country or something. Well, I he left the country and he came back. Oh, he came back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they why would. wouldn't you for Christ's sake? I mean, God, God, you know, he got everybody <laughs> in the world up as. Uh, yeah. He was hiding out for a couple of days. Every, all the media trying to reach him and stuff like that. And, and I'm, I'm still kind of questioning about that, that whole thing too, because I heard, I've heard reports that there were 200 rounds fired at that guy. And he got wounded in the leg, and there's no bullet holes anywhere in the hallway. I thought there. Were, I heard it was like 200 shots through the door, and he got hit once. That's why. I yeah, mean, that's what like, I heard too. And I'm going, well, that just don't make no sense. Yeah. You know? I know. Especially if he's standing in a hallway, you're going to pick up more than one round. You know? <laughs> that door is not going to be a whole lot. It's going to be pretty seriously damaged. You know, even five, five, six, 200 rounds through a door, it's going to seriously damage it. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that nobody else got hit. I mean, those walls ain't that thick. No, uh -uh. That was the case. There was bullets going into other rooms. So, I, you know, the reporting on this has just been so all over the place. It's hard to make any sense out of any of it. And you haven't heard a word out of anybody else who was on that floor either, I don't think, unless I'm mistaken. I haven't heard anything, no. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of – people heard it above. Heard people heard it below. Where are they? Now, yeah. It's, you know, unless people are just sworn to secrecy or hiding out or something, I don't know, man. But all I know is it, 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 it's a messed up deal. And – I wish I had. I wish I could say why happened, what happened, but I, yeah, I don't. No even people I know here, I can't find out. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. I think it's going to be very difficult to, uh, yeah. to really to ever find out what's going on. Okay, so let's uh, move on from that. Um, where is the ammo and silencer development headed? Do you guys think? Uh, so I think people. <laughs> that's like two separate questions in one. So ammo development, do you think, um, is there a need for ammunition development? Yes. So, okay. So uh, well, more. Um, respect, I mean, better ammo or? or somebody or, needs to bring out some, some 545 that's cheaper. Oh, we were already talking about that. Did so. you guys? Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so where, where do you guys, uh, Mark, where do you think um, ammo development should go? Or do you even care about that at this point? Well, I'd like to see nine by thirty nine come in. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's coming. Yeah, that's coming. Uh, it's coming. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I and I and I hear some people are going to make guns for it. I hope so. I, don't <laughs> I heard through the, I heard some places some yeah, people are going right. to make guns for it. I noticed Jim's forthcoming, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, why we would never Wolf thought be about it. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah. Why would Wolf so, be importing that ammo if somebody wasn't going to make a gun for him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I've heard a couple of local guy, uh, local U.S. builders are pretty close to finishing one right now. We haven't started one yet. But we did order a reamer to start to make a barrel. You know, right, right. Is it um? Does it fit? I don't know that much about it. Does it fit in the standard mag, or it fits in a, what type of magazine? A three hundred eight mag or something like that? Or? Um, yeah. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. What do you know, Mark? Yeah. I think it fits in a uh, 6.5 bag, actually. It stacks a lot like 308. Okay. So let's explain to people out there, not me, but like, you know, let's say I have a friend out there who doesn't know what the 9 by 39 is. How do we explain that to him? Well, it's a big ass bullet that weighs <laughs> 205 grain, and it'll knock the crap out of anything. And you can get it, what, subsonic and pretty quiet? Well, that's what the Russians use yeah. it for, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is in that, Well, I mean, some of it's subsonic. They also yeah. have high velocity. And that really cool rifle that everybody's jonesing for here. So is this, a, is this um, something new that the Russians developed? It's not, not, new. Really developed. not new. No, it's, okay, it's not new. It's just not commonplace. I think it's like a spec okay. ops round. It's not, I mean, they're, most militaries using, what, the 545 or the, the 762? I think this is mostly like a, a specialty cartridge. Okay, so this is the... Ago, they were trying to sell it to us. I mean... <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Um, so... But but they did... They did... Uh, they, they've issued subsonic 7.62 by 39 for ages. 
and uh, that's where they decided it wasn't quite enough. And that's why I think it's funny when people get AKs chambered in uh, uh, the blackout. It's like, uh, why don't you just order some subsonic ammo? Is there is there any who's or is there anybody importing the subsonic? I've hardly seen any. I, I to be honest, I've never seen any. It's a specialty thing, I think. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of companies uh, of which I can't really name right now. Um, but I could uh, I could come up with that for your next podcast. I could. Uh, okay. Yeah, there there there's uh, several companies that make subsonic. Uh, 762 by 39. Okay. So now let's tackle the um, suppressor part of that conversation. You know, where do you th guys think the whole suppressor thing's going? I mean, I, you know, right now suppressor is a kind of, there's kind of like a suppressor apocalypse going on, but where do you think suppressors are going for AKs? Well, I think they should go up. I mean, it's like, uh, why don't you fire up your car in the morning with 12-inch straight pipes, you know? Wait a minute. I would know. totally do that. You got to come, you know, to, <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> gotta, gotta come to Florida. <laughs> I've had uh, people ask me for uh, flash enhancement devices and uh, <laughs> things like that that I've made over the years. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Like Walter's saying here in Florida, people <laughs> cut out catalytic converters and all that kind of stuff and go right to the straight pipes. But um, so obviously, like Liberty has the AK Otic, you know, um, do you think there should be more AK specific suppressors? You know? Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's when I, honestly, I, I didn't think a AK could be suppressed well because of the gas port size, but, uh, wow, they're suppressible. I mean, I, I think they're, they're, they're quieter than theirs. I was, I was just about to say, funny enough, the, my crank, I have, um, um, I shoot an Omega on my crank and I, it's only what a 10 inch barrel or whatever. I think it's quieter than my, my 11 inch SBR at AR. Yeah. And is it, um, I think we saw something coming out of Russia, like a, a complete gun built integrally suppressed, right? Yeah, the VSS. Yeah, that's the one that and, everybody and others. Yeah. yeah, that's the one that takes that cartridge, correct? Yeah, that's the one that shoots the 9x39. Right, right. Yeah, so when are one of you guys building that? <laughs> Jim? Uh, Jim? Yeah. Again. Come uh -oh. on, Jim. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, answer that, will you? <laughs> I'm going, I'm going a different direction. We're, we're, we're working on stuff like that. But we're going in a different direction with it. Um, the, oh, really? Okay. We, you know, we did a lot of work suppressing the AK because, like Mark said, everybody said it couldn't be suppressed, and there's still people that think it can't be suppressed, even though a lot of people are doing it quite successfully. Mark's done it. I've done it. Dead Air's done it. Um, Tech's done it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it, it can be done if you know what to do. If you know the system, you can make the system work with a suppressor, and without being obnoxious to shoot and. Uh, so we can only go. We can only go forward from there. There's always things that are going to that are going to change and going to get better. You know, I mean, we're working on a, in a per certain direction on suppressing the AKs. That's uh, not an integral type of thing, but something a little bit more user friendly for the market. And uh, you know, hope to have it out one of these days soon. But um, working on a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, um, I do so, think that there's a future for suppression on AKs. Like Mark said, you know, you wouldn't drive your car down the street without a muffler, and it really should be the. I'd like to be able to go to a range and shoot without wearing hearing protection. Oh, me too. I absolutely hate wearing those things, to be honest with you. And if everybody had a suppressor, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah. I've become such a snob. Whenever I go to the range and somebody's shooting like a, a 308 or whatever next to me without a suppressor, I'm just like, I'm going to go down a couple bays. This is obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> so is that like, so part of the development for that, are we changing? Because, you know, the moving parts on the AK also add to the noise. So is there a way to dampen down the noise uh, with the moving parts? The things that are slapping against each other. Well, that's not what our suppressor is necessarily supposed to do. No, mm -hmm. but um, you know, done in the right way. I mean, it, it's all about controlling the gas and putting it in directions you need it to go to make it not offensive to the shooter. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. I mean, we've we've used expansion chambers, different springs, different different port sizes, a few other tricks that we do with 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 things. Um, one thing new is coming out to be. Uh, it's going to be a big plus. Is um, KNS just did an adjustable gas piston. I haven't got, seen it yet, but I'd like to see that. 
<laughs> that has merit in suppressing Nikkei. Um, and Mark probably knows what I'm talking about with that. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a, that was a very good idea. In fact, that pissed me off. I was like, <laughs> you want to know, I mean, yeah, I always go when it's a good idea when it pisses me off. Well, it's, <laughs> is, is that the one that's very similar to this? No, no. it's a, it, it adjusts oh. in and out of okay. the gas cylinder, oh. and and that's one way of regulating gas. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, interesting. Interesting. Water. So, uh, what company is that? What's that? What was the company that's um, working on that? Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, just report. <laughs> yeah. She said the name. Hey, I can't we can conveniently <laughs> forget. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> yeah, Mark doesn't want us to remember what the name is. No. Well, oh, anything I'm sorry. we can't answer tonight, we'll, we'll put it on an addendum uh, <laughs> and answer all these things okay. to show that we're forthcoming. Wasn't it KSS or something? Yeah, well, so it, 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 that, that means not necessarily known for making AK parts. I was kind of surprised, you know. Um, but they make a lot of odd stuff. You know, they make the the, the PKM stock screws. <laughs> well, no. I mean, if you ever tried to find PKM stock screws, they're very hard to find. K and S makes actually makes them. You know, yeah, that's a that's a a niche market. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah. very niche. But when you need one, you need one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the way to go with making stuff. You know, I think that's that's. Good. Well, that's good business, you know, to do it, especially when no one else is making it. Uh, Zeke Shoot says, uh, "Would be cool to see someone start a run of Type One trunnions." What do you guys think about that? Type One. Uh, if somebody built barrels to screw into them, that might be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I mean, like the the old ones, kind of like the uh, Sega shotgun trunnion. Uh, I'm not sure, Zeke. You're gonna have to uh, elaborate. You know, elaborate on that for yeah. us. I got a question for you guys. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the uh, the Vityaz, the nine millimeter? Is that I feel like that's one that I would love to own, but never been imported. Never really. I don't think anybody's even making anything. What like is that. it? The Vityaz. It's the nine mil AK that uh, the Russians are using. I saw a company the other day. Um, let's see. It's a, It's built off of a seventy four receiver. It sounds like. Um, yeah, they, we've never, nobody's ever imported it, but I've always thought it's really cool. But I think it's just, yeah. and it's just straight blowback nine millimeter. Is it's that, is that a good one. idea in you guys' opinion, nine millimeter AK? My opinion, I'll just say, I'm just not a big fan of pistol caliber carbines. They're fun, but <laughs> you know, if I'm going to carry a rifle, I want it to have a rifle cartridge. That's just, but that's me. <laughs> now on the, on the, on the guy that sells. That, that would be us actually. Uh, yeah. Why, why would you? Take a pistol to a rifle fight. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess they have spoken. It's very popular now, though. Yeah. They are. I mean, if you have a properly proportioned receiver, like the Russian stuff is, um, mm -hmm. you could sell, you wouldn't be able to make them fast enough if they had, if you could get them. I guarantee you that. I mean, um, but the problem is there's no supply of them, so. Even yeah, AK, yeah. even I mean, Klesnikov USA, hard. which has been promising and promising, can't seem to deliver. Yeah, so. they, they haven't gotten any. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there was a few parse kits that came in, but remember, those parse kits come from Russia, so yeah. that changes a whole lot well, of them. Right, right. Yeah, right. So while we're on the subject of popular, what do you guys think about, um, and Jim, you can jump in on this one first, what do you think about the rappers liking um, the Draco, the Draco, <laughs> or however you want to put it? <laughs> yeah. Know? Oh, and and therefore, thanks for asking, Jim. Yeah, go ahead, take that one, Jim. <laughs> very colorful. Uh, a lot of things are going on in the entertainment industry that I could have a lot. Of, I could have a field day ranting about, but you know, um, I'm not. I don't follow rap music. I couldn't name a. I couldn't really name a rap. Probably if I named a rapper, it would be somebody like old, like Ice T or Ice Cube, and I only know them from TV. Yeah, no. Okay, those are good. Those are good rappers to name. <laughs> and you know what? You're not missing a thing. Sorry. <laughs> well, like I said, no, there's. You know, to be honest, you know, I mean, I, you know, I am. A, I am kind of a music guy. I, I, I played music for many years, and, and I listen to a lot of modern heavy metal music actually. And the rap music has actually kind of worked its way into some of that stuff. You listen to some of the, like, uh, 
Five Finger Death Punch, you know, Ian Moody does a lot of rap stuff in his stuff. I mean, it's not like true rap stuff, but they're definitely being influenced by it. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, as, as far as the gun thing, you know, a Draco is kind of a cool little toy. Um, and I know it kind of has a street appeal. Um, I just don't really want to get too deep into that kind of comment or somebody's somebody out there is going to say, oh, you're being a racist, you know. Oh, that's um, okay. I will. I will write the ghetto pass for you if that's necessary. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, no, I, I get it. I get it. I could be critical about a Draco, but then somebody say, "Oh, you're just being racist because that's what that guy has." No, Draco is a pistol. It's not really a rifle. It's they're made pretty, pretty rough, and yeah, you know, they're not bad. If it works, it works, and if you enjoy it, shoot it and have fun with it. You know? right. exactly. SBR. It. Everything needs to be SBR. <laughs> Yeah, you right. put, a, put, put a stock on everything. A real stock on it, not an, not as not a, not an arm brace. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, um, an AK pistol. If your if your pants are already sagging to the ground, AK pistol not going to help that situation. <laughs> 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 That's my advice. No. You know, if you're already you're pants gonna, on the ground, doesn't help. You're just going to be wiggling trying to get away and be dead. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anybody? Uh, anybody? Just, Go ahead. Just, oh, wait, I thought Mark was going to say something ahead, about this before we move on. Let's see what Mark has to say. About what? <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough say, for me. That's it, good enough for me right there. <laughs> it's a cool little pistol, and... Um, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, Walter, what were you going to say? You know what society has done to us old white guys? <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys are like scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. No. <laughs> you got no reason to be scared. Well, I'm not scared. I'll say shit. I just get myself in trouble for saying it. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, scared ain't necessarily will... his thing. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I'm here to pass the, like, these aren't the white guys you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll move on. I'll move on. What were you going to say, Walter? Walter's shaking his head right now. He's like, I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> well, get... oh, I can believe it. This is actually pretty mild, to be honest with you. Uh, okay, you know I'm g you're going to get embarrassed a little bit. Okay. You haven't, you haven't got any lubricious lo lo lesbian stuff yet or anything. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, I'm being this is good. really mild I'm for us. Behavior. Lola is watching me very carefully <laughs> to make sure well, I'm on my best I behavior. I simply identify as a wombat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Hey, I'm just trying to be weird, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody identifies as something. I want to be a wombat. Hey. I want to be a wombat. Okay, very cool. <laughs> very cool. I got it. You know, I want to identify as one of Daenerys's dragons. How about that? I don't. You guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Nope. Do you guys watch Game of Thrones at all, Jim? I've never watched it. You ever heard of the Game of Thrones? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't watch it. Oh, never oh, watched it. What about you, Mark? You ever watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> Hold on, let's see Mark's no, face. Was, uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones? Yeah, like, WTF over? Like, yeah. Mark is like, Game of Thrones? I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's a TV show on HBO. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good show. You haven't HBO. missed anything. Yeah. Um, it's got zombies and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. zombies. I love zombies. <laughs> <laughs> the other white meat. The other, yeah, the other <laughs> white meat. <laughs> That's a good one. Hey, you got to eat. You got to eat, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I, I didn't. I didn't ask what was the perfect uh, AK for a zombie for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so I, go I ahead. Was, I was going to ask an A quick question, but we okay, got to go ahead. <laughs> What do you, this is a this is a pre band FEG from Hungary. Nice. Uh, it actually was my first AK that I wanted, and they when I went to buy one, all I could get was a Chinese one. So, um, so I, this I picked up in a trade um, a couple of years ago up at Knob Creek. But um, I I just I was always just like the way they were made and the way they were painted and the and, the, and every, how everything fit together. I think there was decent quality oh, guns. Make nice stuff. They do. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that looks Sun like the underfolder. 
Was there a yes, question? It is. Yes, it is. Yeah, Walter, what was the question? Or were you just bragging and showing up? No, you I was just making it. I guess I was going to say, what do they think of Hungarian AKs? So, yeah. you know, Walter's just showing off his AK. Yeah, that's right. Physically. Well, oh, I was told, here, here, back up. I was told to bring guns, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and you guys want to talk about going to the potty and all that stuff? Go ahead. Go right ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> it's good you brought the guns. I know. It's um, good you brought the guns. So let's question, see. The, there's a question from chat. Uh, have you guys, do you guys consider, have you guys considered doing any 12 gauge, like the Vepper 12s, going into shotguns at all, either? Yeah. Well, if they'd be there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be a smart ass, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, was from, that, was from. Um, <laughs> that was from Sean M. was asking. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, you consider doing any uh, Vepper, like. Um, it's like a 12, like, Vepper 12. Just like Mark said, like, you know, there's, there's really, there's none to sell. You know, right. you'd have to. I mean, I wouldn't consider doing a line of something unless I knew I could get them in the future, and I can't count on that. You know, I mean, yeah, I kind of learned my lesson with Saegas on that. We we kind of the first time say when Saega, um, we had a, a pallet of Saegas uh, base rifles on order when Kalishnikov Concern first declared bankruptcy, and instead of 108, we got eight rifles. That hurt. <laughs> me. Oh, wow. That so sucks. I, yeah. I just at that point I decided not to depend on any any foreign imports anymore. It's just a business decision we made at the time. The Vepers are beautiful guns, and I, a matter of fact, I was so impressed with them. I actually built um, I built up a kind of a DMR type um, five four five Veper that I really liked the gun. I thought, man, maybe we ought to offer this. And then then shortly after that was when they got when they were gone. So it's like, supply, well, there you go. yeah, supply dried up on all of it. Yeah. So would you guys take so if all the if folks out there have the guns, um, would you guys take them and customize them or you're not you don't really want to do that that much anymore? I can't speak to the new management on that. You know, I mean, I work on them occasionally because we have local guys that bring them in every once in a while. Um, whether our new management wants to take them in or not, it's really up to him. I, I, I can't make that choice. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, I've got a, a thing here from uh, uh, Mark. Did you want to say anything else about that? <laughs> well, no, I was hoping to duck that question. Hey, has got to bring you back in. I saw you over there being very <laughs> silent. <laughs> production only. He's I, trying to. He, it, it's hard to tell a person how much or why it knocks you out of the groove so bad, but. Uh, to do a one-off when you're trying to make a cost-effective gun, oh yeah, uh, it just beats you to death. Um, you, you can't sustain it. Uh, you know, mild modifications on guns that, that that are hours and stuff like that. I mean, and or repairs or whatever. Not that our guns ever need repair. <laughs> Well, speaking, speaking of, of that, uh, someone it, it's uh it's something that we keep to a minimum. Somebody was asking me uh about warranty in your guys' guns. How do you guys handle that or, or 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 is there warranty or how does that work? I mean, I don't know. We don't have written warranty, but right. we don't really care if you're the original owner or yeah. not. We'll fix your gun and we'll pay for the shipping and all okay. that. But uh um, it's, it's, you know, we try to take care of the people that spend money with us. I, I kind of do the same thing. I, I like to say, I like to see you shooting your gun. So, you know, I fixed some stuff that I probably shouldn't have fixed because it was really abused. You know, like when somebody sends you a, a rifle with a live round stuck in the chamber, <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so no, I, through, I, no, through, I know there, there's stuff that through the U.S. Postal Service, by the way, too. Uh, you know, and, and there are some how... people out there, and then, but there, there's also there. Look, anybody that buys custom gun, really, you know, I mean, uh, they're spending more for it, and they they should get the attention. Right, know? right, and like I said, you want you, you want to see your customers out shooting. So, because if they're out shooting, they're showing it to their friends. Well, that's one of the things I tell people. I say, first off, uh, we'd like to see you back, and second off, we don't want you making us look bad while you're out there. So, right, you know, hundred percent right, right. agree. That's exactly how we run things. You know, uh, you're, you're buying a high end rifle. You should get high end support behind it. You know, right, right, right. Mark's right on about that. Same thing with yeah, us. Uh, you know, we, we, we've <laughs> taken the warranty guns off off used people that bought them used. You know. 
And uh, if there's a workmanship failure, we fix it. You know, simple yeah. as that. Part yeah, failure. that's if it's due to workmanship. Uh, right. If somebody decides to put tannerite in it and shoot it. <laughs> well, <laughs> <it's out. laughs> you know? And some people do that. I've had people buy brand new guns and tow them behind a Jeep and then tell me how good they were. And then I look at them and I go, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, well, that's, that's that, a whole nother subject. Guess, that was for a YouTube video. Yeah. Had to have been. Mm, yeah. I wonder who did that. Um, <laughs> um, hey, listen, if it got a million views. What I'm talking about was about 10 years ago. Uh -huh. I mean, just a guy out there wanted to see what it would do. I was amazed. <laughs> Okay, cool. So this is from Nathan Lopez. He says, uh, Jim, I have a crooked stock on my Wasser 10. How do I check to see if it's just a warped stock or of a jacked up rare trunnion? Hmm. Put a straight, take the stock off, put a straight edge next to the receiver, and you should yeah, be able see. to see if the hang is on an angle or not. Yeah, see if it's off to one direction. Yeah. Yep. yeah, there you go. Hope that um, helped you out with that question. I'm trying yeah. to go through, uh, Babyface, if you see any other questions. Yeah, you know. I had one. Um, uh, Jim, are you planning on doing any rifle classes? I think he, they were asking you about class, build classes, I think they asked. Oh, yeah, we have one scheduled um, every month except August next year. Oh, sweet. There you go. So I can't remember okay. who asked that, but are they all? Your answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, like how many students did you have in each class? Because I think they'll sell out really fast, right, Jim? Yeah, we, we at this point, we're limiting it to 10 students per class. And, uh, hey, go just we like to keep a large instructor to student ratio in classes like that to make sure that nothing gets by us. You know, hey, we're allowed. Throw this out there. We need to take the summer vacation this year. <laughs> oh, go take uh, a class. <laughs> yeah, Babyface wants to come take a class. Yeah, you'd be welcome, man. Come on down. Oh, it'd be yeah. so much fun. Yeah, if I, you're it's around. a lot of fun. A lot more to it than most people think. Um, oh yeah. You know, it's it's a two day event. You build the gun the first day, and uh, the second day, the first half of the day, you're on the range test firing and playing with other guns and stuff. And Last half of the day, you're just kind of polishing up your gun and making it nice. So, um, we do a lot of stuff there, and you'd have a good time. With it, you know, it's, uh, awesome. We're we're yeah. proud of the fact that there's a couple of pretty good builders out there right now that we train, and, and they they're, they went in business now and they're doing good work too. So, uh, that's the reason we started doing that thing because we wanted people to build it, treat this gun with integrity and build it right. You know? And yeah, and I think you mentioned before, but how much is a class? A typical class? Uh, Twenty three hundred, and of course and, you get a gun out of that. You know, okay, yeah. so you, you don't have to bring your own stuff then. You're just show up and build no, something. No, we provide everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, Babyface's, that's his dream. He's you know, He would love to build, he would love to build uh, guns, build AKs. Uh, eventually so that's like a dream thing for him. So, yeah. One day I'll get there. So, have, you bought a lot, have you bought a, a ticket? <laughs> I haven't bought anything yet. Yeah, you didn't buy, you didn't buy one of the raffle tickets? Oh, raffle tickets? No, I need to. I still need yes, to. Yes, take your yet. butt over. Do I need to put here? Let me Let's post see. this. Put the link. Put the link up. Let me put the link up so that you can take your butt and get a get it. I'll put it up in the chat here so everyone can go do it. And I'll put it up in the chat over there reminding everyone to uh, go and participate in this raffle. You know, we, we, we want to get it going. There's, there's some really good prizes in there. And by the way... Babyface, one of the prizes is you get a private class with Jim Fuller. All you have to do is bring your own materials. Woo! Yeah, so get out to Las Vegas. Right <laughs> yeah, and get out to Vegas, of course. You know. Oh, I'll take a trip to Vegas. Yeah. So you might want you might want to uh, get in on this raffle, and um, you know, I think Lola, Lola and I bought uh, six tickets already. Lola, did you did you get any more tickets? Yep. She. Yeah, I got more tickets. Yeah, she got more tickets. How many? I got a couple more too, there, baby. Oh, okay, yeah. Lola just bought another six. Oh, they're done. So there you go. Killing it over there. <laughs> Lola's awesome. Great. Yeah. So Lola just bought more tickets. You guys, I want to encourage you guys to get out there and buy more tickets. Lots of cool prizes. We are getting ready to show the guns, the guns that are um, the guns that we have here today. So we're getting ready to go into some gun porn. All right, got a question again. Go ahead. What's the question? Milled receiver versus stamped, the ultimate AK question. Yeah, um, Jim I, never gets this question. I prefer. Uh, <laughs> I no prefer ever asked Jim this question. <laughs> <laughs> Jim milled or stamped? <laughs> uh, if I got to carry it all day, I want a stamp gun. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Simple as that. There you go. I like light guns. The um, the gun you built for accuracy was it milled or stamped? It was milled. Okay. Yeah. So the less less receiver flex, less. Yeah. Less everything. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, there's there's some validity to that most milled guns tend to be a little bit more accurate. I mean, there's there's definitely a noticeable difference, but like I said, to me, an AK is to be is to be carried a lot and not not be a burden. So, I, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with milled guns. But I I own a few and I like them a lot. They're they're fun to shoot, but um, as a go-to gun, it's always going to be a stamp gun for me. Okay, yeah. stamped, and and then stamped is lighter, right? So obviously, That's what he's much lighter, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, here's a milled gun that I have. This is just like a cheap uh, American Tactical Imports, but it's uh, milled, so I've never had any problems with it. And I put the, um, I, th I believe it's called the Raptor Trigger from Tacon, which is that um, that rapid fire AK trigger. I put that in here. So, what do you think about like uh, triggers and things like that? You know, is as an upgrade, do you like that, Jim, or you know? Oh, definitely. Um, okay. I, I'm a big, you know, the V2 is kind of more standard. I'm also, I'm a very big fan of the ALG AKT. I like That's that. That's what I've been, I, both my AKs have ALG. Yeah. So I will never go yeah, for my, standard. My traditional guns, I keep a G2 in it because it's more a traditional trigger. But all my hot rodded guns run AKTs. I love that trigger a lot. Yeah. Um, now, fast. yeah, I think that that's a. Uh, I've shot that trigger. It's actually a pretty good trigger. Um, I hear it's not as easy to put in. Now, I don't know who's got good videos on it. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to put in, but it's a great trigger a when you get in. Yeah, there's a little more work to it, but it's yeah. not bad. You know, it's also the more affordable one, right? Because I think that's like I want to I want to say it's sixty or seventy bucks, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they're fifty bucks retail yeah. for the. AKT. I think yeah. I got mine for like 50, 55, maybe somewhere. Yeah. There. Did you have a tough time installing yours, Patrick? Oh, not we, at we know all. Jim didn't because you know. No, I solar. mine almost dropped right in. I still the only thing I can say is they do have a over travel stop. I think something like that, that you can file in. I never yeah. did that. Mine worked without, so I never I never messed with it. Okay. Yeah, AK Sports kind of like that. It may work out that way. Yeah. 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 So so um so let's go to Mark. Mark, what do you think uh milled or stamped? <laughs> I like I, I well <laughs> I, I know people think uh, Jim and I are on some sort of union or something like that, but I feel the same way. Uh, and Russian uh, Russian statistics say that the stamp lasts as long as the uh, machined. Okay. And what the gun is kind of intended for, um, and I do notice accuracy differences in the receiver, maybe not with an iron sight gun, Maybe with it's hard to say, yeah, but definitely with the gone. scope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and then how you feel about triggers? Uh, the trigger you guys were just talking about is kind of a nice trigger, um, and mine was very easy to install. But yeah. then, AK trigger holes aren't always in the same spot. No, they're not. As, <laughs> as, as, as perfect as they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that most are not the same from gun to, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So, yeah, uh, they ain't even the same little manufacturer. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Zeke shoot says the spring in the same country of origin. <laughs> yeah. Um, Zeke says Zeke shoot says if the spring does not bite you when putting the FCG together, you are doing it wrong. AKs require <laughs> blood sacrifice to work properly. I did <laughs> I did get hit in the knuckles by it the first couple times. And it, like the spring came over the top and hit me, but yeah. <laughs> All right, try, uh, try a twist tie or one of those little steel clamps. Yeah, uh, that helps. Yeah, we uh, use we use twelve gauge shotgun pills. Oh, that works as well. You wrap it around the back and put a shell over the top. Smart. Yeah, you just put an empty shell Trade. over the top. Trade, the top. <laughs> Trade <laughs> secret. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Hank. I'm noticing something with that AK of yours. What? Is that barrel rusty as it looks? Is it rusty? No. It it's got a red tint camera. to it. Everybody yeah. else notice that? Yeah, um, the camera has it. It looks a little red on camera. Yeah, that's. The, I think that's the camera. I don't see that with my naked eye, but oh, I could be wrong. Like Maybe it needs. Know, what are you I'm saying? Just, it needs some oiling. Okay. Well, I just you know. Yeah. Go ahead. It's green rust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that special parkerizing that's green. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's uh, all the screen. I don't see it with my naked eye, so I don't know. Maybe the camera's showing something that yeah, I can't see. It doesn't look like it now. Looks okay. like it on the shadow. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. There you go. Now, uh, Warsaw Patriot wants to know, um, what do you guys, what do you think about Brandon, AKA the AK guys project where he built an AK capable of shooting the big 50 BMG? Oh, the 50 AK. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you guys think about that? Well, he actually actually shot anything yet. So no, he did. I think uh, I saw a video where he put one round through it. I thought it was, I thought that was a, was that a actual live round or was it just a, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not saying he hadn't, but I, I thought what yeah. I saw was like a, just a primary one. set off. But you know, yeah, I don't know. You put one through it. That's what I hear. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. pretty impressive yeah. for a semi-auto rifle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I look. Anybody doing something new gets crapped on because they're trying something new. But. Um, yeah. If I was going to video a semi-auto rifle, I I think I'd put off more than one round. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they okay, Jim. Do you have anything to say on this? Um, the AK platform is not built for a fifty caliber round. It's just not, or it would have been done. Figured <laughs> that out too after he fired his first round. So that's all I want to say on that. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's it's pretty ginormous in size, so. Yeah, um, I mean, this is going to be hand grenade going off inside a receiver. Yeah. You know, you look at a Ma Deuce, you look at a Barrett. There's a reason that they're built the way they're built because that's a powerful freaking round with a lot of pressure in it. It can create a lot of damage if it's done wrong. So oh, I mean, I, need to I mean, the, on the, the Russians are using the the Dushka, right? That's that they're like 12 millimeter, which is like a 50. It's, I it's mean, if they if they wanted a 50 they, or a 12 millimeter, they would have gone with a 12 mil AK, but they, they keep using that old Dushka. They've yeah, got the disc too. How that that thing's built like a damn Mack truck compared yeah. to an AK. Yeah, it's exactly. Half, Twelve point seven round is not much different than a fifty. It's just a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's about bigger, the same yeah. type of pressures and stuff. And you look at the way that gun's built. It was built that way for a reason. Cause that's what it takes to handle. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, just Dano says on the ALG AK trigger, it's the roll pin install that can be a pain. That's what yeah, he never, says. I never did. Mine worked out perfect without, so I never did it. Oh, you didn't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then with, um, I know that with that 50 AK that we're talking about, I mean, you're going to be looking at, you know, once, if that ever uh, comes to fruition, you're looking at a twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 gun. Yeah. So. What's the AK thing? Um, yeah. The AK 50, if that ever, if he ever actually builds those and sells those. I mean, I'm not sure it'd be 20 or 30. I think it'd be on par at least yeah. with uh with like the barretts if you can't come in underneath a bear you won't sell one that's, that's exactly gonna be that's i think that's going to be an expensive gun to actually build and put out there into the world i, I, oh, I don't know yeah. that's just me yeah well so it's a cool thing i think it's a cool thing and it's uh you know I, i'm not against any gun existing in the world guns are good you know yeah yeah, I believe you. yeah but it's going to be it's going to be something very expensive to be out there okay so who so let's show some guns guys well, I've been waiting for um, that. Let's see, Krebs, you guys have some guns you can show us? I've see the gun. <laughs> show us your guns. I grab a gun out of the bedroom. Yeah. That's my two or my, my Russian guns. Yeah, see, Jim's getting his I'm guns. Working. Let's see some guns. Up. Let's get some guns up yeah, in here. I just want to grab me a couple of guns out of my man room. <laughs> oh, I'm nice. right now. I'm out of the shop. Here, oh, we got a, okay. I, got another, I got another home build. Well, you guys. Okay, in the meanwhile, some, okay, so go ahead, baby. Face. Here's your opportunity. Show off. This is the, uh, this is a... 87? Well, I don't know when it was. No, 69. 69 Tula Parks kit. Nice. Uh, again, I wanted I wanted to go Russian. I'm I'm a snob. <laughs> so yeah. I built a I built up a, a And you have the good basics, I think, on there. Look, you got a sling. When people were asking us earlier about the basics, oh. a sling is a good basic to put Yeah, I went, for, I went for a sling. It uh, maintained everything. The only thing that I did different was I Saracoded it. Um, instead of going with like Whatever sort of crazy paint job the Russians use, <laughs> I went with Cerakote because it's available and it works really well for me. Um, but yeah. yeah, it shoots yeah, it okay. shoots really well and uh, it you know it works. Scott, as Kim, well. Scott Kimball says two K for a fifty AK. That's about all he's going to pay. I don't think it's going to be two thousand. Well, guess what? <laughs> well, I mean, for a semi-auto, you're not going to see anything for that. So, yeah. yeah, good I mean, luck with that I mean, one. I mean, you could get you could get one of my single shot uppers for less than that. So. You know. Uh, did you guys? Did you guys already ask the question? What uh, what each prefers shooting? Do you guys like five four five or seven six two better? Um, Jim, what are you for? Five four five or seven six two? Five four five guy all the way. I love that yeah. round. I love the five four five. Hank, Hank can attest to that. 
Yeah, I me love too. shooting five four five. Five four five. I don't know, uh, Mark. What are you? Five four five or seven six two? I like five four five personally. <laughs> there you go, Walter. You want to chime in on this, Walter? I, I like I like the five four five. I mean, uh, but you know, whatever the. Whatever we're shooting that day is fine. Too, so. Seven six two help up with the fireballs. That's what Walter likes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, this one you mean? Yeah, yeah. A little tiny thing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Um, so, all right. Anybody? Anybody have any love for the uh, FPK or the 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 five four five? When they're not bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I like them. Yeah, yeah the factory uh, guns were actually pretty good guns. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't have too high expectations, you're all right. You know, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that, right. man. I'll Good tell point. you, they'll, they'll group like two and a half inches at a hundred, but at five hundred, they'll get about, you know, six to eight. Right, right, right. I mean, because and obviously, the imparted vibration on the barrel, they yaw out, and then they come back in. Okay, okay. something I learned That's from Ben Tresters, but is definitely the case with uh, mechanically induced. Barrel whip. Oh, okay. okay. Obviously, uh, with better ammo, you get better results too. So, yeah. Um, Warsaw Patriot says he shot multiple live rounds. Um, I didn't see that, uh, but uh, I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that either. I mean, I, he probably did. I, I haven't seen yeah, it though. So. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I'm not following no. it close or anything. So. Yeah. Okay. So, Mark, what do you got? Oh, oh uh, we yeah, got. No, this is not. <laughs> anything we make anymore but uh, this is a um, AK 104 uh, nice. pretty traditional except for our, our uh, flash hider on the end that's a, that a pretty gun <laughs> they have a little bit a uh, little bit shorter booster on it normally than a uh, crink off <laughs> it looks good but yeah it's kind of it's a cool gun uh, and what kind of stock I can't see the stock on that I beg your pardon. What kind of stock do you have on there? That's just the Russian triangular. Oh, triangular favorite, one. Okay, favorite stock. Go. I love yeah. the triangle stock. Yeah, hey, me too. Actually, speaking yeah. of that, speaking uh, of that, speaking of those stocks, which I happen to have one of those right here, um, who who's got the 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 rest of the pieces for the? Oh. This is a, f a four point five millimeter. Any good sources for that? Um, I think Krebs. The Krebs are pricey. Yeah, Krebs. Do you guys still make those, or you're not making those? No, we we don't have availability to the parts that we can rely on, right. and like Jim was talking about earlier, you you can't set up for something that you're not gonna. Nothing makes people madder than uh, offering something that you can't stock. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So Jim, um, I know you've got something very nice there to show us. I'm talking oh, about the gun. I'm talking about the gun. <laughs> Okay. There's a. <laughs> well, I'm at my house, so I'm just. It, 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 I just have to deal with what I got at my house, but this is my yeah. personal gun. This is a okay. 1950 Type 2 reweld. Pretty cool gun. It actually shoots pretty good still. That's cool. Yeah. What did you say? 1950? It's a reweld. Yeah. Did a post sample? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's try to get it up to the camera there. I'm, I don't know if you can see the. Probably not. That oh, is to see cool. the welds on it? Uh, you can't see the welds. We did a no. pretty good job. Of it. I spent a lot of time on cleaning this thing up. Even inside, it's pretty hard to find the welds. Oh wow, uh, that is super super cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a cool gun. I mean, and then on the other end of the spectrum, yeah, it's probably my URD. Oh wait, this one's loaded. Hang on. <laughs> the way it should be. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, um, I think this is probably the best gun that we have ever produced. It's a uh, it's a hybrid between. Um, an AKS 74U and an AK 105. So uh, essentially, it's a crank with a full length handguard and, and rail. And uh, it, this particular barrel length at 11 and a half is really, really good for suppression. We found this to be quite effective. I'm running a Surefire 30 caliber can on this thing. Okay. And cool. it's even with 545, it's pretty quiet. It's, uh, yeah. And, yeah. So basically, I see like on there, you've got what looks like uh, you got the Surefire, you've got a light, I want to say, and a, and the red dot, right? That's all. That's it. Yeah, yeah, and a red dot. No, yeah, and a strap, right? And that's basically oh, it. Dogs, yeah, man. the sling. I run, yeah. Haley, I run the HSP Haley sling that he uses. It's a combination two point one point sling, very lightweight. And I like it a lot. Um, Aim point T one, 
And you notice I'm using Krebs handguard here. It's a little bit modified, but we, we, you know, we like to play with it. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what I don't know what I never asked Mark what he thought about us doing that. But it's like, hey, I got uh, the ultimate. You hacked the, you yeah, hacked the handguard, great. man. I um, wouldn't have sold them to you if I didn't like it. No, I think that's cool. <laughs> Well, you know, rather than, I mean, yeah, I'm still buying your part, right? <laughs> so. You know, and there you go. Yes. Um, you can sell us back the top half, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, actually, I actually thought, you know, maybe we want to send these things back because I think we got a shitload of them in the shop right now. <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? I'll look into that because yeah, we don't we don't really use them, so maybe I'll send them back to you because we don't use them at all. You know, mm. not, not that they're not usable. It's just that this is the setup we like. You know. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, uh, Mark, did you get some other stuff in there? Um, Let's see, what's the next thing you're pulling up here? Just looking at. Um, may or may not have it. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's what do you, What would you guys down. like to see? I'll let the the. Other guys here on the panel. <laughs> uh, uh, Jim, I was gonna. I had a question for Jim. Um, okay. When you when you run triangle stocks, do you always run one of your uh, one of your uh, what is little the little thing that goes in the back? God, what's it called? Stock pouch. Your little, zip, your little zipper pouch. You run those on all of them. On my guns, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, they they serve a good purpose. Um, uh, I keep I, 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 rounds in them, a spare bolt, SBR papers. Yeah, um, one thing we found them to be really helpful for, and even particular here in our desert environment in the summer, it gets pretty hot, and it's kind of nice to have that insulation away from the oh, metal. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't burn your cheek off. <laughs> yeah, even cold weather, you know, if it's like freezing weather and you stick your face up there and it sticks to it or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of helpful for that reason, you know. Yeah, absolutely. They well. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mark, what was that gun you guys pulled off the rack there? Um, th this is a, a AMD that we made um, a kit for for Blackwater, um, and uh, they had a, a cache of uh, brand new AMDs they could get a hold of. Uh, but by the time we got it done, uh, they had been absorbed into a uh, another military outfit and oh, weren't able to use them. Some operators uh, sold them off. Contract things that happen um, that stink. But um, the, the people that were uh, kind of sponsoring the project were true in their hearts. Uh, it's just the military kind of screwed up. Okay. I like what I like what Tim is playing with right yeah. there in the background. What is that? Bring it up. Bring it up. Let's see. It's not. It's not exactly. It's not AK a, related, but it's not an AK, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a. Is that loaded? Point my face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Machine gun safety. <laughs> right. Uh, Muzzle sweep everyone. <laughs> yeah. They've got to be fair. Stop it. Yeah. Mm. All right, very cool. Okay, so um, any other thing? You know what? I've got a question in here. Um, Merc Maniac says, um, no. So he says the ALG AK trigger beats half the garbage aftermarket AR triggers out there. And then I got another question asking, like, do we think that there'll be a binary style AK trigger? Like, so you know, you're seeing these binary. In other words, when you pull the trigger, it shoots. When you release yeah. it, it shoots. What do you guys think could, about that? Would that be good for the AK or? Huh? I could care for this. I think it's. A, I think it's probably. I know there's people that like that stuff, but it creates a lot of problems. I mean, right now they're trying to regulate that stuff as it is. So, I really don't have any have any desire for one myself. But I know there are people that do. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we might be talking to one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not me though. Well, it's easy for me to say that because I'm a manufacturer and I have yeah. machine guns. Well, I do too. Yeah, yeah but I'm, I'm not talking about me. No, yeah. Hank. Hank loves them. Yeah, I mean, Jim's I, not I'm, saying they shouldn't exist. He just says he, you know, he's got the machine gun. I, I'm up there with Hank. I can't afford a. I can't afford a machine gun, so they're yeah. they're well, a good. I can't even buy dealer samples. Post samples. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I could just go out and buy post samples because I would own too many of them. Yeah, that's kind of what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how it goes down. So, what did you think about that, Mark? I I, I don't like them much, okay. uh, but th that's like I said. They're you know, 
there are many things in the firearms world that work and have their place. And just because they're not in my place or Jim's place, it doesn't mean that they're not a viable product long as they're safe. Well, good. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, and I well, think that those triggers work better than uh, bump fire or slide fire or however you want to put it. But all of that stuff has a place. Huh? It's certainly more controllable, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think they are more controllable. And, and you know, for whoever was asking about that, um, I forgot who was asking that question right now. But I think that, that those companies are working on something like that. So you'll probably I'm see sure something. The rumor is it's in the works from what I've heard. Yeah, I think, I think sure. those things are in the works. Um, Man Brown one says he'd like to know Mark and Jim's views on the Russian AK-107. Are you talking about the counterbalance gun? Uh, I have no idea. AK-94, yeah. 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 Uh, let me see. I would have to look up the AK-107. Is that the? That's one of the newer ones. I don't models, know. Right? Yeah. Um, well, there you have the problem right there. Nobody's seen them. Unless yeah. you've been to Russia or you've been in the CIA, you probably haven't seen one. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of hard to make a judgment on guns like that. I mean, Larry Vickers has got a chance to go there and play with that stuff. I hope to next year. We kind of have an end to do the same thing he's been doing. But uh, uh, that's awesome. you, you need like a bodyguard on that trip, or you know, <laughs> they they just blindfold you and, and take you somewhere. And yeah, yeah. With, with Lyndon, we got the AN ninety four, but it didn't seem like uh, it. I, I would have rather had a seventy four. I think at the end of the day. Yeah, it's pretty hard to beat the standard AKM and AK-74 designs. I mean, they're they're pretty flawless guns. They, they, the newer improvements may be good, you know, but, I mean, the simplicity of the gun and the way they work, it... it I was I just about to say, there's there's a beauty to simplicity. Yeah, yeah I think... Hard to break one. Right, and, and the, the AN-94 weighed 9.5 pounds. Yeah. Do 1,800 rounds per minute until it kicked into 450, and... Though it was truly a concept that has not been pioneered, which was gorgeous about the thing, it in reality, I don't think I could have hit better. I think I could have. I, I think I could have done better with the seventy-four than I did with that. Even okay. though it was truly an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not. It's, it's complicated to make too. Lots of little pieces and wheels, and that's the one that's got a cable yeah. inside and all that stuff. Yeah. It's like a cable and yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. Again, it comes down. It comes down to the simplicity. I mean, the reason why AKs are so prolific is because they're simple and cheap to make, and you can put it in the the hands of anybody, and they can learn to Did shoot. You say it. they were easy to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like me. Yeah. Just they were easy to make. Garage, garage. Yeah. Who is aren't too bad. Like, who is this guy? Double <laughs> aren't bad. I want him off the show now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll mute him. I'll mute him, Mark. <laughs> Listen, but you can well, teach somebody uh, to shoot one of those in in like two minutes in the yeah. the, the, the hills of, of Africa or Pakistan or wherever. Right. Well, yeah. that brings up a subject yeah, that Mark, I always... he's saying that now, but listen, he's a future AK builder. Let's <laughs> okay. see what he's saying, you know, <laughs> let 10 me... years from now when he actually gets into the business. Let me, let me, I should Thanks. bring my, my girlfriend over and have her tell you how many nights I came in from the garage cursing, trying to build, I spent a summer trying to build this AK, the, the crank. Oh, oh, really? Oh my God. I spent so many nights just, just cursing myself to sleep because like something wouldn't fit, something didn't work. Got to oh, modify no. this, got to make this work. Really? Did you have to drill out rivets? Uh, yeah, yep. Had to drill the rivets, and that was the biggest pain in the ass. I hate doing that. Uh, okay. This one, this one I didn't do. Then you're vetted. Um, no, no, I didn't. Rivet. Actually, both parts kits, both part kits. I had to drill rivets out, and I, I hated every moment of it. Yeah, we'll see when he when we get him down here. Okay, um, this is gonna be the last question. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have never heard this question. What do you think is more accurate? Um. When, when it comes to cartridges, two two three slash five five six or five four five by thirty nine. Who's the question? Uh, Jim. Um, I would say that as it stands now, the five five six probably has the potential to be more accurate, mainly because there's more choices. You know, you can we can reload it here. We can buy who knows how many different types of loadings of it. Whereas with the five four five, you're pretty limited. 
So if the 545 had the ability to be the way, you know, in our, if it was the same in our market as the 556 was, I think the 556 would have some serious competition. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mark, you want to take that one? I, I believe that. Um, and I also believe it's a more reliable cartridge. Exactly. Conical shape. Um, yeah. it, it's, uh, and that's where the 223 gains a little bit of accuracy, but I don't think it's worth it. And the ballistic coefficient in the, the, the bullet is actually pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, I mean, uh, I've been, go I ahead. Accuracy-wise, I've been able to hit man-sized targets beyond 700 yards at that round. So it doesn't really need to be more accurate for what the gun is. That's you know? pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, and just FYI, babyface, Peggy Killer Keller says, that's your fiance now. So Oh, my God. Yeah, I have to say that now. Respect <laughs> it. Don't call her your girlfriend anymore. He's yeah, moved on to a... Man, you get picked up by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're not picking a Walter tonight. Like, oh, I guess I'm taking the front of it. Yeah, don't mess it up now, man, because you know she gets to keep that ring no matter what happens. <laughs> and you're going to be crying about how many AKs that ring could have bought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't do right. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? Okay, we've been doing this for over two hours. I think we should wrap up right now. Um, I want to remind everyone that's watching that the whole point of this, you know, if you guys appreciate the fact that we had Jim Fuller and Mark Krebs on here, then the way that I'd like you to thank them and thank us for doing this is please participate in the uh, Krebs Custom Raffle. There is a link in the description. Um, you can just search on Google Krebs Custom Raffle. There's lots of uh, there's some really cool prizes in the in the raffle. Um, several AKs in there, and you get parts, uh, including a receiver and and just added to it. It's not officially on the list yet, but you get to have a private building class with Jim so Fuller. You just have to provide the materials. You can you can scratch. We just got to charge it for the parts. That's all. You can scratch yeah. that off the list because I'm winning that, that one. That, that's huge. <laughs> the time it's going to take it's, him to show a person, that is huge. It's, it's amazingly uh, huge. Uh, yeah. Uh, that That's a very cool thing. Oh, yeah. You know, I want to win that. <laughs> you know, I've actually hung out with Jim and, and done some videos on him, but I, he hasn't shown me how to build anything yet. So uh, that, could yeah. take, that could take more than two days, though. <laughs> it could take a <laughs> long time. <laughs> Jim would probably wind up burying me somewhere in the desert and just telling Lola. He never, came, he never showed up over here, Lola. A lot of holes out there. <laughs> 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 so it's it's a really great raffle. It's for a really good cause. Um, you know, there's a family right now in need. Um, the the wife is is going through cancer and all that kind of stuff. I think we all understand um, how that is. So you know, really, I think this was like a great show. I'm really happy that these guys showed up here and they did it. Um, you know, it's very generous of of everyone to come on. But the the big thing here is we do want to do a push for the custom raffle. We got it over 10,000. I think we're at 10,700 right now. Um, and I look forward to seeing this grow over the days. We will, we'll have Mark uh, come back before December 1st. I think it's ending on December 1st. There's 2,500 tickets. It's uh, 20 bucks a ticket. If you, if you spend a hundred bucks, you can actually get six tickets. Uh, 20, 20 a ticket. Yeah, yeah, 20 20, a ticket. yeah, 20 a ticket. And if you spend a hundred, you can get like six tickets. So that's, that's a good deal. Um, very good chance of winning something very cool, as we said. So you know what? I'm going to wrap up. Jim, I know you're tired. Is there any last things you want to tell the folks out there before we go? Buy raffle tickets. <laughs> Buy tickets. Support these people and help them. That's, that's why we're here. I commend Mark for doing this. I commend you for helping him do it, and that's why I'm here. Uh, buy the tickets. Help these people. Yeah, Jim like had a, a grand total of two days to get ready for this too, and he jumped right on. And uh, thank you, Jim. I, I truly, this really helped the show thing go on and um, hammer in the point. And I appreciate your participation big time. Thanks, Mark. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, buddy. Keep doing what and, you do, and all of you for doing this. Um, it's Freaking awesome. I appreciate it. Great. Uh, are, are there any um, last things you want to remind us of before we go, Mark? Um, 
eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good one. Well, let, me, let me ask something here. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is going to do it. Anybody have any Black Friday specials? Yeah. Do you guys, uh, Mark, you having any Black Friday stuff going down? Uh, gonna sell, gonna sell the tops of those uh, Jim Fuller's hand cards. Yeah, there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about it. I still have to tell you tomorrow, but uh, they autograph those things and get top dollar for them. Yeah, well, if you get, if, 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 but don't give Jim more work to do. He's, he's semi retired. He's semi retired. We don't want him to have Not to like semi retired. <laughs> no, I'm not, man. I work more hours now than I did. Before. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and he's happy. More and interested now. He's giving me more yeah. heartache now than he ever has, you know. So, it's good. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. That's that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. So, um, listen, if you, uh, Mark, uh, and same thing, Jim. Do you guys have any Black Friday stuff coming up? Any specials? I don't know. Um, we do have something coming, but I don't know what it is yet. Um, they were talking about it around the shop today. And um, again, you know, I don't own this place anymore, so somebody else makes those choices. But there is something coming. We will have a Black Friday sale. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. I think the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, um, 24 hours before Thanksgiving, we're going to have a specific show here for Black Friday. We're going to have lots of deals. I can tell you guys that right now. Um, we're going to have some deals, some Safety Harbor firearms, some Walter. But we will check back with um, Rifle Dynamics as well as uh, – Krebs Custom and whatever Black Friday sales they have going on, we'll bring those to you guys as well. Ooh, I'll uh, give you a preview. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna. Oh, you're gonna give us a preview, Walter? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have all of our, all of our stocks, whether the Kess, the Kess stock for the AR or the, or the Sig stock, um, for the MCX and the MPX, and the Rattler, um, and our steel stocks for the 50 cal rifles, all 20 percent off. Um, and that's not including the um, the new uh, CZ one, but um, that's already marked down below. That's a dealer price right now. So, okay. uh, yeah, 20% 20 20 off on all the stocks. So. Yeah. So for anyone who's looking for Black Friday deals, come back and check us out uh, Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. We'll have that. We'll have some exclusive stuff. I can tell you guys we're actually going to have um, some deals from uh, Brownells and some other places going on here. So right, right. it's going to be cool. And we will report to you what Rifle Dynamics and Krebs Custom is doing. Babyface, well, any last have to do something now, Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. I got it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta add that to my list. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we painted you into a corner. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll get on that. That's why you're here right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is the meeting. This is the meeting where it goes down. Okay, so Babyface, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, not really. No, but uh, I haven't got my ticket, so I got to go do that okay. after the call. Yeah, are you sure you didn't want to tell Jim Fuller and Mark Krebs no, this was, how this was easy awesome. it is to make AKs? You didn't want this to. Is, this was like the best thing ever. <laughs> Hank can tell you I was giddy just thinking about jumping on this car. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I know he wanted to hang out with you guys a little bit. Yeah. And one of these days I'll bring him to Shot Show. Then um, we love and, you, man. Yeah, appropriate <laughs> smackdowns could be put on baby face. <laughs> yeah, him. He's only he's only like eighteen or nineteen. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Whip by the poor guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets he gets it worse than this. Yeah. All right. So you know what? I want to thank everyone for joining us. We had great questions. Everyone hanging out there. We appreciate everyone that bought raffle tickets. We really do. I encourage you guys to uh, get more of those tickets, and we'll keep reminding you of it. It's really for good cause, and you know we want to do as much as we can to help these folks. So thanks everyone. Thanks to everyone on the panel. Thank you so much, Jim Fuller. Awesome, dude. Thank you for spending so much time with us, man. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah. My pleasure, and, guys. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, same to you, Mark. Thanks for hanging out with us and keeping the guys the guys there in the shop. You know, what is it? Triple overtime? Triple overtime tonight? <laughs> Triple <laughs> overtime? Actually, it's beer. Oh, um, it's beer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get it. Um, it's beer. Yeah, we, we afford that much you know i mean we're yeah okay <laughs> enjoy a few on us guys all right so thanks so much uh you know uh mark jim you guys stay there but we're gonna hang up right now thanks to everyone for hanging out with us we really appreciate it we'll see you guys tomorrow i think we have tactical walls in the house so that's gonna be our guest tomorrow peace oh. out we're out of here see you guys bye <laughs>